Good evening, everyone. Calling together the planning board meeting for Tuesday, August 2nd. Um, first, I have to read an opening statement. <clears throat> This meeting is being recorded in accordance with the government order suspending certain provisions of the opening meeting law, General Law Chapter 38, Section 20. Real-time public participation and comment can be added to the planning board utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. This application will allow users to view the meeting and send a comment or question to the chair via the question and answer function. Submitted text comments will be read into the record. For those of you joining the phone, press star nine. If you want to ask a question, please raise your hand. A copy of this recording will be on the city's web pages. All votes will be done via roll call to ensure account accuracy. And on that note, can we do a quick uh, introduction and attendance roll call for, uh, first we'll start with Rob May. Hi, I'm Rob May, Director of Planning and Economic Development. It's Ham Gurley. Sam Gurley, I am the admin in the planning department. We have some new members of the planning department, Evan Sears. Looks like a deer in headlights. <laughs> frozen. And um, our frozen. newest member for the planning department is Rode Jermaine. Hey, everyone. I'm Rode, the new admin. Okay, and then our uh, introduction, a roll call to. Oh, forgot the most important guy, my guy, Ed, Ed, Chief Ed Williams, sorry. Hi, Deputy Chief uh, Edward Williams with the Brockton Fire Department. Thank you. Um, introduction and roll call, Tony Gonzalez, Chair of the Planning Board. Next, Jim. I'm sorry, is it my turn? Yes. I want to introduce myself. My name is Jim Sweeney, uh, also a representative to the ZBA and traffic commission. Thank you, Larry. Larry Hassan, planning board committee member. Thank you, Purita. Purita Das, planning board committee member. Okay, thank you. Um, PM, could you just um, reiterate what needs to happen for each applicant as far as there being only four board members, we're short one right now? <laughs> because this is a four member board, any site plan review applications and return to the ZBA will require all four of you to vote in the affirmative. If not, the motion fails or to either way, affirmative or denial. All right, thank you. And the agenda still is um, sticking one through it is. nine is, is still active. Okay. Yes. Um, before we get into the minutes for accepting, well, I guess we could take a vote. Did um, did you all have a chance to review last month's minutes? Yes. Is there a motion to accept? Motion to accept. Second. Okay. Um, James Sweeney? Yes. Larry Hassan? Yes. Farita? Yes. Yes from Tony. Uh, next. Um, we asked, well, I asked um, if we could move the meeting for September to September 1st for a couple reasons. One, I won't be in town, and two, more importantly, it's voting day on September 2nd. Uh, 2nd, is that it, Pam? No, September 6th. 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 That, that would be the date of the meeting. Yeah, thank yeah. you for that. That would have been our meeting, so I'm suggesting September 1st for those two reasons. Um, this is, does anyone have a conflict or can we proceed with September 1st? Good. Thank you. It's fine with me. All right, Pam, you can go ahead okay. and do your notifications. Thank you. Um, and Pam, I guess you'll start off with, um, we got a two Madam, Madam chair. I'm, yes. I'm sorry. Just one second before we get into the, um, whole rigmarole of the agenda, I do want to announce that this is Pam Gurley's last planning board meeting. What? That she will be retiring um, a week from Friday. And um, I hope everybody gets a chance to wish her well. No wonder why she's looking 20 years younger. Mm. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, Pam, our, our, I, I, 
Friday, Friday, Friday or end of the month? A week from Friday, the 12th. Ooh. The 12th. 12th, okay. Congrats. Thank you. It's all right, Tony. <laughs> 30, 30 years with the city. Wow, that's a lot. Thank you for all your years, PM, but you will be missed. I second that. <laughs> all right, so the a and Rs. Um, hang on. Um, so we have an A and off at Thatcher Street, and that's actually um, the vicinity of um, Everett's. There was a piece of property that they had um, probably been using for some time, and the city declared it surplus and was able to sell it to Everett. So this is the ANR separating that piece of property off from the remainder of the property. All right, so you need a, a, a vote, a motion yes. and a vote? Yes. Okay. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Okay, roll call. James? Yes. Larry? Yes. Clarita? Yes. Tony? Yes. Okay. Um, 7 and 15 Chilton mm -hmm. Road. This is a little bit different, but these are both owned by um, Carney. And there's there's a stone wall, a historic stone wall that they want preserved. And they're afraid that if one of them ever sold the property, whoever bought the property would destroy the wall because it straddled the property line. So now what they've done is <clears throat> reconfigured the property line. So the stone wall is all within one property. Okay, is there a motion? Motion to accept. Motion to approve. Sorry, Larry. Sorry. Second. Okay. Roll call, James. Yes. Larry. Yes. Rita. Yes. Tony. Yes. Um, hang on, just one second. I need to. Okay, I'll fix that later. Um, lot releases. Stonehill and Tiffany, that was a two lot subdivision and uh, you had released one lot for them to build on. This is the final lot. Um, the only thing we were missing was the as-built plan. When they made their first request, we now have that along with all the approval letters. So right. it's, it's specifically that parcel, parcel 60073 Tiffany. All right, great. Is there a motion? Excuse me, Madam Chair. I just didn't see it on the agenda. So is that, I'm, am I missing something? Uh, is this on it was a revised agenda. Oh, okay. you know what? I sent it to um, the chair and I didn't send okay. it to you. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. I, I understand the scope of it anyways. All right. Motion to grant. Second. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Roll call, James. Yes. Larry. Yes. Rita. Yes. And Tony. Yes. Um, lot A, Farrington Street. Um, you'll remember this as 50 Farrington Street. Um, we they are asking for release of the new lot so they can build a single family home. They're retaining the single family home. So that one will stay in the covenant. They just want to build the new house. All right, is there a motion? I didn't see this one on the agenda either. That's Larry. the same thing, I'm sorry. They're in the, they're think. in your Google boxes, but. Oh, okay. Yeah, you, you received it from Evan, I believe. The... And Evan sent it in the. Yeah. I'm looking at Evan's right now, I don't, I don't see it. I don't Can have anything about long It's been around for a while. Oh, okay, all right. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. All right. Roll call, James. Yes. Larry. Yes. Rita. Yes. Tony. Yes. Okay. I do have one more. That is not on your um, agenda. 
and it came in late today at the request of attorney McCluskey, who's handling the sale of the Augusta Street, Prospect Street subdivision that was the Hebshi subdivision. Um, this seems to be a really old covenant uh, that they dug up when they did the title search from something called Greenfield Acres in 1965. Um, they're asking for release of that covenant. I checked with engineering and they said, just release the covenant because everything out there is already built. What, what is the covenant restricting? Um, actually, probably the house lots, but the houses were built in the 1960s. So nobody ever found this in all the title searches that have been done. So technically it's not restricting anything, but it's recorded against the property. So the, the new buyers want it released. As a covenant that doesn't restrict anything? <laughs> hmm. Well, the lots have all been built on. So there were probably lot releases mm -hmm. issued at the time in the 60s, maybe, but no, covenant official release of the covenant. And kind does of the a department see any issues with paperwork this? trail? Mr. May, does the department see any issues with this lot release? Uh, no, we don't. Um, it's, it's one of those things that should have been cleared up uh, a dozen and a half years ago, but uh, it never was. Okay, is there a motion? Motion to approve. A second. Roll call, James. Yes. Larry. Yes. Marita. Yes. Tony. Yes. All right. Any others, Pam? No. Nope. No street I'm, acceptances. No. No proposed zoning changes. Okay. Um, so now we'll get into the agenda, which hasn't changed. Um, number one, 1449 Main Street, return to ZBA. Applicant Alicia Fernandez, attorney John Creedon. Madam Chair? Yes. Could I just um, ask Pam to send me the link to the Google Drive? I can't find it. <clears throat> he needs the link to the Google Drive. Thank you. Just move John Creedon, Jake. And I'm looking for Fernandes. Um, if you're with this case, please raise your hand so I can move you into the um, into the up. Uh, I see counselor. Want to move her to a panelist. Is in Az Azu, excuse me, is moved to a panelist. Is the applicant here also? The applicant is with me. Um, oh, she's with you. Head. Okay. Yep. In my office. Thank you, sir. Okay, the floor is yours. Thank you, Madam Chair Lady. Uh, first thing is, I need a clarification uh, from Pam um, on Section 1640A about returning to the zoning board. And again, um, the language. Uh, indicates that um, if you had an unfavorable decision from the zoning board, okay, unless all but one of the members of the planning board consents thereto, and after notice is given to the parties at the time and place of the proceedings, uh, when such consent will be considered. Well, we've got a four person board, I think the rule is uh, a majority, and I think three is a majority out of four. And so three could vote for and one against. And because uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's too risky to go with just a four person board if it has to be totally unanimous. Mr. May, <laughs> I don't believe that's the interpretation, but not a lawyer. It's not, it's not the way it's been handled. Um, it's like zoning board. 
it's actually been handled. It's, yeah. it's it's only site plan review where they say all, uh, four of the five members, which is always hamstrung us if we don't have that fifth member. Um, because we're a four person board, it would require a vote of three, simple majority. Well, we are, okay, we are. That's, um, what, that's been the rule for years. Uh, so, yeah, and that's, that's what we have done. Okay. And so what if it goes two, two and two? It does not carry. It does yeah. not carry. Um, th that's up to the board. I don't know, you've always, I'm, if they if they were if they were three and one, they have not passed in the that's the way the vote's been, but that I like it, not a lawyer. I can and and I don't think I can pull up the rules and regs. So yeah. I, I can't location, but it we have done this in the past where um it it's of uh, the site plan review says of the of the members and this uh, says of the seated members. Okay, That's do, correct. Do any of the bo board members have an issue with going on with four, three out of three to one? I don't have a problem with a simple majority. Okay. All right, okay. then let's proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair, Lady Attorney Jake Creighton, 471 Legion Parkway, Brockton. With me is uh, Alicia Fernandes, the petitioner, and uh, I believe Azul, the engineer, Antonio, is uh, on Zoom with us. This has uh, come up a couple of times. Um, I will remind the board that the denial, which usually gets read, basically found that the variants didn't carry because of a couple, uh, four things. Failure to demonstrate a hardship, okay? And which is the major thing in the various. The lot area was deficient in the area and street frontage. Well, I can tell you that our own ordinances indicate that a minimum of 50 foot frontage and a minimum of 5,000 square feet is enough for existing lot of record to be an existing lot of record. So that decision on that particular thing was incorrect. Secondly, uh, thirdly, uh, the, the major, and this was in my opinion, and I think everybody else's opinion, the major problem was that the off-street parking um, required stacking, which is one vehicle after another. We then submitted a new plan that indicated, uh, and Azu can address that, that does not include stacking. And stacking for obvious reasons, even with people that know each other, is somewhat of a hazard because you can back into somebody or hit somebody in the front. Um, we, we have addressed that and we changed that in the new plan. And, and lastly, um, they put in the standard uh, pablum about soil condition, shape of the lot, topography, or structure. We spent a number of times indicating that the structure, which, is, which was built, I guess, as a commercial structure, has no absolute, and we've gone through all of the uses that are allowed in a C2 zone, and none of them would support, that structure would support a commercial use because all the commercial uses that are principal permitted uses in our zoning book indicate that, um, that you need uh, so many spaces. Now, any retail business obviously couldn't support four parking spaces, um, all of the other, and there's a whole legion of, of uses you can have in a C2 zone, and none of them come up to the ability for that particular building to be used as a commercial use. The major reason, as I indicated, because we were all there, and I think Councilman McCastro is on the screen with us, um, indicated, first of all, that the building was built in 1940 before World War II. Obviously things have major changed. Uh, and since then, when we put the petition in, the commercial uses either side of us and all in the area were notified and none of them had an objection to it. The 
proposal that we made, which was a two family up and down three bedroom. We indicated that we would and did in this new petition change the direction of the flow in and out such that the major issue such that cars wouldn't back out onto Main Street. Everybody agrees that's not a smart thing or even in my experience in Brockton for 53 years, backing out even to a side street is not a good idea. Uh, Zoo and us have changed that plan substantially so that vehicles now coming in, but coming out more importantly, come nose first out onto Main Street when it's safe to do so. Um, that, that is certainly the most major substantial change. And again, the structure which we indicated we would uh, demolish um, has absolutely no commercial use. And I think recently, I think even member uh, Sweeney would, would remember last month or the month before, we had one turned down up on North Main Street. And, uh, and it was, uh, I thought it was a good proposal, but the dilemma was two commercial, very important Brockton figures were against it because their businesses were right there. Again, I indicated uh, at the original meeting, a Councilor Nicastro, who's on the screen, indicated her favor that that building basically has no use and has no use as a commercial building. So those are the things that I would ask you to consider. And again, the, your legal determination is whether or not there is a substantial change in what was proposed in the new plan. It has nothing to do at all with your opinion as to whether or not we can prove hardship. That's strictly zoning. And if they don't like it, when we get, if we can get back there, we can get turned down again. But that's strictly a zoning decision. Um, Madam Chair? Yes. Um, I, well, um, Mr. Creedon was speaking. I had a chance to go back and check Mass General Law. And um, I may be changing my opinion on that. Um, section 16 states uh, of uh, chapter 40A, section 16, um, uh, you can't return blah, 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 unless said special permit granting authority or, or permit granting or permit granting authority finds by a unanimous vote of a board of three members or by a vote of four members of a board of five members or two thirds vote of a board of more than five members, et cetera, et cetera. So we have a five member board. It just happens that one of the members is not seated. Um, I do not know if, um, we're standing on solid ground at the moment. I know if the boards are parallel, it was always, you had to clean sweep four votes. But I thought, you know, if you had done it in the past, then I was fine with that, but. You have not Tony, done it. Tony yeah, does I it. Might no, it was, I had it reversed. It's site plan review. In, in the notice was not given to was. Yeah, I was gonna suggest that. Oh, now it's your understanding that um, it, it, it'll need to be a unanimous four. Yes, ma'am. I mean, it's all about the two-year wait on whatever plan you file um, to determine whether or not there is a substantial change in the petition as uh, the new plans that are filed. And I already alluded to the parking, the flow, the green space, and a whole bunch of other things that we've already alluded to. So attorney Creedon, it's your, you want to proceed with the four board members? Well, as, as long as, um, as long as um, planning department may is satisfied that it would be a, to carry the vote, it would be three. And would, if, if one member uh, just dissented, but if three positive of the board voted, it would send it back to the zoning board. In what I had just read from uh, Chapter 40A, Section 16, you need all four votes. Then I would request that we continue to next month. 
and I disagree with the okay. vote with, with that decision. But. Okay, so Pam, he wants to continue this. Um, that is fine. Can you just have to make a motion, a motion to allow him to continue to the next meeting? Is there a motion? Motion to approve for continuance to next meeting. Second. Roll call, James. Yes. Larry. Yes. Freedom. Yes. Tony. Yes. Just one request, Mr. Chairman, can the planning board head Mr. May and myself and the city solicitor finally meet? I've tried to meet about six times on this issue. And uh, as long as uh, Rob and myself <clears throat> and the city solicitor can meet to, to take care of any unclear areas by the next meeting, we'd be happy to do that. Um, Mr. Mr. Creedon, um, Pam and I did meet with the city solicitor um and and she has provided us with guidance which is in the memo that um sean uh excuse me that shane excuse no, me evan, yeah, evan <laughs> sears sent out um gosh it's a bad night don't you remember um, the uh, rob don't you remember the first meeting you i said remember you that requesting i was supposed meeting. to be there so. what well, but City count, uh, the city solicitor has said that she's our representative and she feels that she has communicated this to us to convey to you that okay. uh, a change in parking is not a substantial change. Okay. Again, I'd like to see a copy of that memo, that's if I could. Well, a good lawyer like never writes anything down. <laughs> I didn't think so. Um. And uh, Attorney Creedon, as far as I'm aware, and Rob or Pam, correct me if I'm wrong, we don't have a candidate yet for this fifth seat. So before at the or the day of the next meeting, we, okay. we might just want to check, check with, with Pam. Pam. Oh, 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 Pam, with Pam. Pam. Congratulations, there. Pam. Can so check in with me before has... next Friday. I you actually know, you can talked check in to with I... Evan or Road. Yeah. I talked mayor... to Road today, so I'll talk to Road about it. The mayor had. Um through public media and uh, uh, social media and other avenues have requested um, resumes and letters of interest from anybody who is interested in serving on a board. There are a couple of board openings that they're trying to fill. So if you are interested in, if you're a Brockton resident and have um, certain uh, experience criteria, uh, please uh, send your, um, Letter to the mayor, email to the mayor, and uh, get an interview. All right, thank, thank you. you. Um, moving on, if we can, to permission to return to ZBA, 88 Emmett Street. Uh, Jason Burrow is the applicant. Mr. Burrow, who is who is representing Mr. Burrow? There's no name as a representative. Maybe himself. No, no, there's Chris. Nope. Got him. Chris should be moved. It's Chris Vale. There's Chris. Him. Oh, where did Chris go? Um, who else is this? Anybody else associated with this case? Please raise your hand. There he is. I'll move Jason. I'm going to have to wait for. And there's Chris. Apologize. Can you hear me and see me? Yes, yes we can. can. Okay, Mr. Veal, the floor is yours. Uh, good evening, Chair and members of uh, the Planning Board. Hang on just one second. This is a return to ZBA, correct? Correct. Correct. So just, just to remind you, you will have to carry all four votes this evening um, to go back to the ZBA. We understand that, and uh, Mr. Burrell and I are comfortable with going forward. Okay. 
Uh, once again, good evening, uh, Attorney Chris Vale representing Mr. Burel. Uh, this is a, a case where we're asking permission to go back to the ZBA uh, based on Mr. Burel's application uh, where he filed on uh, the May 10th hearing of this year where he went to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a variance for his property in an R2 zone asking relief in order to convert a single family house into a multifamily uh, using the existing footprint. Uh, the board based, uh, uh, the board ruled three to two. And I know that the two denials or disfavors were based on the parking scheme uh, of what the applicant had produced. Uh, so we went to uh, an engineer and addressed these concerns uh, in which we added four additional spots. Uh, we made it a parking scheme that makes it uh, very uh, clear where people can ingress and egress out of where the, uh, the property exists uh, by placing the parking in the back, as well as placing parking on the side left. Uh, we also created an entrance way where to the right where the cars are parked, that's where they can park in, get in easily in and out, uh, and also address any safety concerns of getting in there. Uh, so the new plans would allow a, a great new uh, manageable parking scheme, uh, extra parking spots, like I said, available ingress, egress, and uh, we now have additional parking spots. Uh, so we are asking to uh, give us an opportunity to go back to zoning uh, so we can try to uh, convince one of the two uh, denials that we received on May 10th. Um, thank you. Um, so I'll just open it up. I think you might have heard the, the previous applicant and issues. It's, it still remains that the a change to parking is not a substantial change. Well, there's, there's more changes to it than just parking. We've added kind of an entrance way, as well as uh, we changed green space up. So there is additional major changes than just parking. However, the main concerns uh, that the board did have was the parking scheme, which we did address. Uh, so that is why we're looking to, to go forward. Do you um, have the amended plans that you can present? I did okay. uh, submit that with the application. I have the new plans and then I provided it with my application, the, the complete new. Evan, uh, are you able to pull that up? I don't have yeah, it on my- I can, I can put it up. Um, so while we're waiting for that, does other, do other board members have comments, questions? Like I said, this is, an, to see it now. this is an R2 zone where majority of that street is multifamilies all around. Uh, Jim, since you, James Sweeney, since you sit on the ZBA, why wasn't a continuance given if just changing the parking around would be, would meet their, um, their, their standards or, or relieve their- I believe concerns? it was just, you know, it was denied um, as far as I can remember, um, it says no hardships. That's why it was denied. Yeah, it was just a denial, uh, three to two. And if it had been just the parking, would it have, has anyone's been suggested or recommended? I'm not sure it was just that, um, is the entrance way discussed is something would that be a substantial change? No, it was just, it, you know, I know during that hearing, you know, there were a lot of neighbors that came out and to develop that even more was uh, many of them sp spoke against in that. Um, you know, just trying to, you know, off the, off the top of my head here, what I can remember about that hearing. Um, I know I didn't represent uh, Mr. Burel during the zoning, but I know from what I've talked to him and then looking at the zoning board, I, I see that there was no opposition. And uh, I know that was that, the old storefront, correct? Correct. It was, it was an old store and it just, uh, it doesn't fit in with the neighborhood. And I know 
from speaking with Mr. Burrell, the, the communication was more that the original plan had four, four parking spots right side by side, which most of the conversation was that if somebody wanted to get out from that inner spot, they couldn't get out if all four spots were in there. And so that was mainly the, the two denials concerns. So what we did is we created a much more new change, not just parking, but entrance going in an entrance way. And there's complete other different changes to it. And we do think that this is a major uh, extensive change that would allow us to go back to, to zoning. Um, Madam Chair. Mr. Yep, who asked? Madam Chair, I, I think you'll find that the zoning board doesn't uh, grant continuances. They either grant the variance or deny the variance, but they don't grant continuances to change things. That okay. is true. It's I think it's what is on paper is pretty much what we have to go with at zoning. And then sometimes they'll create stipulations, but... Um, can I ask Mr. May, there's an entrance way. I mean, that's that's bigger than just changing the parking area to me, but am I correct? Is that a, a, a substantial change, the entrance way and not just the parking? Because I do want to respect what the city solicitor has advised us on that just parking alone is, is not a substantial change. Um, what about the entrance way? I would think that the entranceway is a whole part of the, the parking layout. Um, a substantial change would be if he was asking this to be a, a originally a, a threeplex and was cutting it down to two or was going from retail to residential, that would be a, a, a substantial change um, if, if the board chose it to be. Um, unfortunately, the state has given us very um, broad language to interpret what a substantial change is. Um, but based on um, uh, feedback that we've received from the city solicitor, uh, just you know, a, a matter of changing the parking or changing the, the layout didn't meet that, that level of substantial. And, and was the entranceway actually dis like discussed as well or just? parking period. Okay, um, I, I, I see what you're trying to do is add things up. I'm sorry, my camera's off, excuse me. I see that you're, you're, you're trying to add things up and it's just, um, you know, just two plus two plus two plus two gets you to a substantial change. Um, it, it, it could. Um, it, it's it's at this time, it's the board's discretion as to if it is substantial or not. Okay, other I... questions, comments from the board members? We have a previously submitted um, proposal drawing. It should be, uh, it should be attached to my application. Evan, can you pull that up? Should be. Is he back? Oh, did he get disconnected? He did. Um, and and board members and panelists, um, if you look at the Q and A, there is a question in there or a comment um, that we will need to get to before we make a uh, decision. So there was a concern with the architecture being able to support a second floor since it was engineered as a one story. Um, this came out of ZBA. This did, uh, oh, I don't know what that question. Uh, John is suggesting that that was the discussion at the, at the board meeting. And I'm sorry, who's John? John is the guest who is submitted the question. Um, James, do you recall that? Um, I'm sure that question was asked. I'm not sure what the response was. Um, that, that is a building department issue anyway. Yeah. 
obviously Mr. Burel wouldn't be able to, to build a multifamily if it wasn't structurally sound. It's going to be inspected. Uh, All right, if there are no other questions or comments from the board, we'll open this up to the public. Hang on just a second. I am switching over. Uh, if there are any members of the public who wish to speak at this time, please use the raise your hand function, uh, which is at the bottom of your screen. You'll see a little hand upturned um, and I will be able to turn on your microphone. And so again, if there's anybody who would like to speak, please raise your hand. If you're on a phone, please um, dial star nine. And Madam Chair, I do not see. And if I anything. could, I can try to show this for the old plan where it did have no entrance. It was just the parking it was literally gonna be right next to the house, but no entrance. We've addressed other changes with green space, but primarily the entrance, which I do believe would be a material change other than just it being parking. Uh, I think this falls different from kind of a, a, a major concern with parking with apartments or anything of that nature. Uh, this is something different. Madam Chair, what part of the process are we on? Are we on public comment still? Yes. Okay. But I don't believe there is anyone. Um, so if you have something, Jim, go ahead. Well, I is my feeling and concern on this, and it was uh, the presentation made during the zoning board, is that it is kind of an eyesore building. It's an old storefront. It's, you know, it kind of needs a little help somehow, some way that can conform. Uh, that's my thought on it. it. It's kind of, you know, it, it needs some work. That's my opinion. So is this the right solution? I think it's, I think it's better than as is. It's us. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Board members, anything else? Are we closing the public portion, Rob? Yes, we are. Okay. All right, is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Who seconded that? No, is, is there a second? No second. All right, roll call, James Sweeney. Yes. Um, without a second, you can't. You don't. Want the it, others? The, the motion failed. The motion the failed. Item. You need a second. All right. So either sorry. somebody has to make a, another motion or motion to deny. Second. All right. Roll calls. James Sweeney. No. Larry Hassan. Yes. Quita Das. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. So because that wasn't unanimous, does that not? No, it don't, I think no. it's just the other way. They need the four to carry, but not. It didn't pass. So we're on to the next item. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Next. Uh, 40R 32 residential unit commercial on Main Street, 142 Main Street. Applicant is 140 Main Historic LLC. And we have Representative Tragworth Companies LLC. I think you just butchered Dave's name, but that's. Right. Sam, are you moving them? Oh, there they are. Uh, David, is there anybody else here with you? I think Davis Square. Yeah, Davis Square as well. Rob, thanks. And that should be Leah, Leah Sheely. And who else? 
Just Leah Sheely from Davis Square. I think, I think she's in as Davis Square. Davis Square. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Shall I start? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. My name is Dave Treborth uh, with Treborth Companies. Um, and I'm, Leah Sheely, I'm joined by Leah Sheely, who's with Davis Square Architects, our architect. Um, <clears throat> we are uh, very excited about uh, this building, uh, 142 Main, and I'm gonna share my screen um, and just walk you through uh, some of the details of what we're trying to do. Um, I think many of you probably recognize this building um, and it is the former uh, Kennedy department store. Um, it has been an office building upstairs for a long time and Elvera's is on the corner. Um, we bought this building um, about six to eight months ago. Um, from a longtime owner uh, with the intention to do what we're talking about tonight. Um, so just again, to orient you, um, this looks directly, the back of the building looks directly at City Hall. Um, the Brockton Beer Company is directly across the street um, and it's adjacent to a parking lot on the corner of School Street and Main Street. Um, our team, uh, as a team that's worked together for a while, my business partner, Dan, Dan Hubbard, myself, our Treborth companies, and then Ross and Leah. Um, this is a historic building um, and uh, we will be pursuing historic tax credits. Uh, so Mary's helping us on the, on the uh, tax credit front. Just a little bit about us. Um, we are entirely in Massachusetts. We're based in Boston. Um, almost everything we've done has been in gateway cities. Um, over the last 13 years. And we've done about 30 projects, 14,000 units, and about $600,000 in project value. We also have retail experience because of these urban environments um, where uh, the ground floor is obviously very important to the main street. Um, and almost everything we've done from a lease up perspective is to locally owned and operated uh, people, uh, business owners um, who, um, have moved in and uh, been successful. Um, and we really view it as a partnership. Um, it's not easy running a retail business to say the least, um, but we, uh, we've we found some great operators who are, who've been successful and we're happy to have Elvera's um, there and continuing um, and continuing to work with Sandra. Just a couple of projects we've done. Uh, in Chelsea, um, Williamstown, um, two projects in Chelsea here and here. This one's under construction right now um, and up in Haverhill um, as well. Uh, we've done a lot of mill rehab, historic buildings, historic tax credit work. Our most recent, one of our most recent completions is in Reading. Uh, this is actually new construction, uh, 55 units uh, with ground floor retail here. Leasing up now and we just finished 19 units in Hamilton. Um, so just a little bit about um, our goal here is just to revitalize an iconic downtown building. This building has been underutilized for a long, long time, um, and we want to bring it back to life and build on the momentum that you all have created in Brockton. Um, I've, I live about 20 minutes east of Brockton um, and have been poking around for quite some time. And this is certainly the right project for us at the right moment. So what are we trying to do? We're gonna invest about $14 million for 32 rental apartments, meet the 20% uh, minimum affordable uh, per the 40R statute. And we're currently planning 50% uh, area median, 50% of the building at 80% AMI and below. Um, 39 parking spaces, five will be on site. I'll show you the plan shortly. 34 will be uh, leased from the parking authority. We'll have about 3,300 square feet of retail. We'll have a space for the apartments. Um, and it's about a 40, 45,000 square foot building. We're not changing the envelope of the building at all. Um, and we're seeking no waivers um, through, if you look at um, the downtown Brockton Smart Growth Overlay District uh, through the 40R, um, we uh, are compliant in each of the areas. This project has been 
um, started through the historic tax credit process and why that while that has been going on we've been going through the city process um, and there's been lots of back and forth in terms of technical details and uh, stormwater and all those types of things uh, happy to get into that as you as you wish uh, the landscape plan so uh, main street is just to the left here there'll be two new street trees um, and i'll try and zoom in on this a little bit uh, two new street trees uh, that'll be put in um, and then the back, this is a, a city hall easement that allows us to get into uh, the rear of the property. Uh, again, we're not changing the footprint of the property at all, uh, but we will, right now, this is just a paved lot uh, with really no improvements whatsoever. Um, and we'll have five parking spaces, uh, one handicapped space per code, um, nice trees and plantings that'll certainly improve uh, that area uh, for sure. Um, and just in terms of uh, utilities that'll be running, uh, we'll be able to reuse the electric service off of Main Street, uh, which we're happy to find out about. You don't need a transformer in the rear. We will just have stormwater, uh, which currently just sheets off, uh, being collected from the roof and from the parking lot going out to School Street. Uh, we will need to obtain a uh, an amendment to our easement uh, to allow that stormwater to happen, uh, connection to happen. Um, and then we'll be connecting gas, uh, electricity, uh, sewer back out onto Main Street uh, through all new services. Um, this is the front elevation of the building once complete. Um, so all new windows, uh, repointing of the brick, um, and the biggest dramatic change will be on the storefront. Um, right now, the storefront is really uh, buttoned up um, covered up, um, and we were able to go down to Mass Historic uh, at the archives and find the original plans for this building in, I think, 1913, um, and we're putting back the storefront that was there when it was Kennedy's. Um, so right here, you'll see uh, a residential, this will be the future residential entrance over here, um, and I'll, I'll show you the floor plan in a minute, but uh, future residential floor, uh, entrance here. Um, and then three commercial bays, which will all be accessed through this sort of area here, which I'll show you in a minute how that will work. But this matches the original elevations. Uh, these were, this is all glass transom above. Uh, this is all currently uh, boarded up essentially um, and all glass down below as well. All new windows upstairs, awning type uh, windows that'll match uh, what was there originally. Um, and the building is about 67 feet tall, uh, just under the high rise uh, designation. Um, and obviously um, got five stories, as you can see. Um, other elevations, uh, as this one pulls up here, hopefully there we go. This is the side elevation looking from School Street in the parking lot. Uh, really no changes that you'll see other than that storefront wrapping around where Alvarez is. Um, and we'll continue to work with her to basically get her into one of these new spots, hopefully right where she is. Obviously, we'll have to go through construction. Uh, so that'll be some logistics juggling that we'll have to do with her. Uh, but we hope to have her back right on that corner. Um, and you can see all new windows upstairs as well. This is the elevation that sort of abuts the neighboring building. So uh, you don't see much of this elevation at all. We do need to fill in two historic windows along the property line for code reasons. Um, and then we're preserved, we're leaving some original windows that are in the hallway, or I'm sorry, in the stairway. And then we are adding uh, new windows on this uh, elevation as well. Um, over in the rear, so if you're sitting at City Hall looking at the building, Right now, uh, there will be a new rear residential entrance to the building, which will also be partially used by uh, the commercial as well, just from a service perspective. This is trash. Uh, trash will be in stored internally, only uh, brought outside when it's getting ready for pickup. Um, and then there is one residential unit that is here um, at this corner. Uh, that'll have a door, windows, and is a really nice residential unit. This is, uh, this is the stairwell that comes out. We are also adding um, some outdoor decks as well, um, just to give some additional open space. And as you can imagine, the view out to City Hall uh, is gorgeous. Uh, so allowing people to really enjoy that um, facade as well. 
uh, down in, just to give you a quick sense of uh, the ground floor, um, here it is. So if we start on the right side. Um, this is the original entry lobby. We're gonna open it up uh, to make the actual residential entry uh, a bit larger. We're putting in a new elevator. The current elevator is definitely not able to be uh, reused given how small it is. Um, we'll be reusing the stair that goes up. Uh, there'll be a mail room. Uh, this is one of the units that's uh, immediately adjacent. We have this nice landscaped area out here for the landscape plan. And then you can see the rear lobby, the trash room, and you can see the three retail tenant bays all accessed through this new uh, entry point that really matches the historic um, uh, way that it was configured. Uh, to get into the to Kennedy's. Um, and so that is the ground floor in a in a real quick nutshell. Um, I'm not going to show you every residential floor. I'm happy to to give you a sense um, if you want to drop back to that, but we have a mix of one and two bedrooms. Um, I think it's 18 two bedrooms, 14 one bedrooms. Um, and you can see uh, basically we're reusing the corridor, reusing the two stairwells. Uh, in the rear and in the uh, on the side, uh, they're beautiful historic stairs. Um, we're reusing the corridor that will not be changed in any way either. Um, basically, what are currently offices will become residential units um, with uh, some great layouts, kitchens, obviously washer and dryer. We will have a washer and dryer room down on the ground floor or in the basement. I apologize. But we also have washer and dryer and select certainly the larger uh, two bedroom units. Um, so uh, residents will have an option for both. Um, so this really follows up through the building um, and will continue to um, you know, preserve those corridors within and all, all that historic de detailing. Down in the basement, um, the building actually goes under the sidewalk. That will be filled in. Um, and uh, no longer uh, basically holding up the sidewalk. We'll fill it in. We'll fit, pour a new sidewalk along Main Street. We'll have uh, electrical remaining in the same location. The lob or the uh, elevator will come down to the basement. We'll have resident storage and then just some of the service rooms as well. So we have plenty of height down in the basement, no residential units, um, but plenty of plenty of amenities. And so, uh, with that, I'm going to stop and I'll leave you with uh, the view out the back of the building, uh, which is of, of City Hall if it decides to pop up. <laughs> uh, there it is. So this is the view out, out the back of the building, uh, which is pretty spectacular. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing for a minute uh, so I can see you all. Um, and then if you want me to pop back into any of the plans or anything, let me know. Thank Madam you. Chair? Yes. If I could just say, um, we have been courting David and his company and his team for quite some time. And we are very excited that he is choosing to make an investment uh, here in Brockton. Uh, he does incredible work and in other communities across the, the Commonwealth. And we're very happy to, to have him here. Um, as a 40R project, um, all of this is, is uh, by right. And he has gone through a tech review and a 40R review with Beta, uh, which is our outside um, consulting firm who does um, code compliance. And he meets all of those issues. There is one thing that we're going to ask him um, on his existing plans. He shows an area for garbage pickup, but when he brings the plans for signing, that garbage pickup area is just going to be removed from the, because he's going to roll out a larger dumpster. Uh, his staff is going to roll out. I don't think they'll do it. Yeah. But um, uh, it'll it'll uh, clean up that whole area a whole heck of a lot. With that, I'll let, turn it back to you, Madam Chair. You kind of took the words right out of my mouth, but this is exciting. Um, but I do have one question before I open up to the other board members. It says we'll be leasing parking spaces from the city mm -hmm. to satisfy parking requirements. So what spaces are those? Because we're already limited just to go to the new brewery over there. 
or to go to city hall sometimes it's hard to find parking so what parking could be taken from the public the community the residents visitors so we have this? yeah we've we've gotten a commitment from the brockton parking authority we, we will in front of them at the end of 2021 um because obviously we we need some parking for this for this building and as you can tell from the, the parcel size there's there's only room for five spaces <laughs> um and so that was a key component and they've said you know we'll commit to leasing to to, to this building in one of the two parking garages that they control nearby. I don't know exactly which. I think that depends upon the timing of when we uh, get get going. And how many parking spaces are you planning to lease? We're going to lease uh, 34 parking spaces. Um, and then we have five on site. So yeah, so you have one uh, handicap parking, right? So right. the other handicap, and how many handicap units are there? Um, Leah, well, it's five five percent of thirty two, right? Leah, mm -hmm. and then round up. Yes, and we we have two. Yeah. Two. So so there. So you need two handicap parking instead of one in that out of five, right? Um, it's a different section of the code. I'll double check that, but it goes by parking spaces, not by units. Mm -hmm. Okay, but the other one will be far from, like far away, right? More than 200 feet. Well, we, so, would, yeah. well, we, would, we would definitely put mm -hmm. any, anybody who's in the, ADA designated units we would put in that lot that's immediately adjacent to it and obviously fully accessible from that lot into the building and up the elevator. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, very nice looking uh, building. Uh, I like the project, I like everything. Only thing is there are so many ME, MEPFP equipment on the roof. So, uh, I know, you know, you, mm -hmm. you talked about the views, you know, from the building to outside, but from the city hall to the building view, they will be seeing a lot of MEP FP equipment. So is there any plan to hide those with any, uh, with the screens? So what, can you just give a, a further clarification on what that equipment is um, for myself and probably the, any of it? Uh, all the it's HVAC equipment, uh, like, yeah. you know, condensers, mm -hmm. um, all the ducts going yep. up to the roof. So if you can pull up the uh, view. So let me pull up. Um, so it's the top of the elevator shaft and other venting equipment. Yeah. See, on the roof, there are so many. Um, so it's it's looking, I mean, these we are seeing just the lines, but it won't be lines. It will be all the equipments like condensers, uh, rooftop units, and stuff like that. So. Yeah, so um, we have to answer this question for, um, I'll stop sharing again if that's okay. Um, we have to answer this question for the National Park Service um, as a historic tax credit project. project. Um, they make sure that none of our vents, um, and we have to put them there like you see that, uh, because what they do then is they do view studies from the sidewalk and make sure that none of that is actually visible from the sidewalk. So it will be set back. You're seeing it because it's a straight on elevation, but if you're standing on, on the sidewalk looking up, because of the angle that you're looking, we've set everything back towards the middle of the building and you will not see uh, the mechanicals. Uh, we can't uh, pass the National Park Service standards and therefore get the tax credits that we need um, if those are visible. So it's definitely something we've studied and it's a good question that 
why are all why is all that there and that's there because we have to show it to the national park service where it is and, and what it'll look like from the from the sidewalk um so hopefully that so makes sense. how far away from the roof edge I mean, it'll be away? it'll be at least 10 feet from the roof edge and this is 67 feet up so you can imagine it's sitting on a flat roof it's 10 feet back from the edge and you're 67 feet down looking up over and 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 it's got a parapet right i mean you will see it because a lot of open space is there i mean you can see it far away but not from not next to the building but yeah. correct if you go all the way down main street mm -hmm. uh, you will start to see some things no doubt about it because the elevation rises over there um but it will not be it's so what it is is basically uh, like the condenser you would see, um, this will be an, an all electric building. Um, so um, the condensers that you would see in your home, if you've gotten like a mini split, that will be on the roof. It's probably three foot tall at the most. It probably sits about six to eight inches off of the roof surface. So let's say three and a half feet at most. Uh, that it's going to be off the roof service surface and then uh, backwards. We're also, we do not have the elevator going to the roof. Uh, so the head house, there is already a head house there, uh, but the head house will be kept pretty minimal. Um, and, and the elevator is more towards the center of the building now. Um, so certainly when you're up near the building on the sidewalks, you will see absolutely none of this. And we, We've proven that to the National Park Service. Madam Chair, if I could, uh, Dave and, and Rob, I just want to say that this is an outstanding project. Um, I have no, um, you know, real issues or things to comment on other than it's going to be a fantastic project. It looks, it looks outstanding um, to really stack these developments one after the other. So that's my piece. Thank you. And I agree. I don't want anyone to think that I don't. I'm just... I, I want, you said you're going to lease 34 parking spaces from the city. I'm really curious of where these spots are going to be because we have enough problem parking there and it will be a detriment to the local businesses in the area. They won't have anywhere for their patrons to park and they're going to lose business. So I really feel like we need to know the plan for the parking. In all uh, fairness. Madam Chair, if I could, um, I, I know we did state that it would be in the garage and I know that some of those neighboring businesses also use that as far as like the elder services I know people that have worked in there and they do garage their vehicle in the garage that does have space um, if that helps I, I know that garage is utilized by that side of the street is that the and that same garage is also completely empty in the evening is that the same garage that the courthouse uses the Adams garage yes it's it's usually empty uh, as far as what it, it can hold. Yeah, and I've, I've talked to a couple of the local businesses um, just to introduce myself and uh, learn about, you know, what they hope to see in the building. Um, and needless to say, they're all very excited <laughs> uh, to see it uh, become COVID really wiped any tenancy of that building out completely. Um, and obviously they're, they're excited to see people come back. Um, Sandra from Alvaro's is super excited to get a new space um, and, and have some, some folks upstairs. And certainly they're also excited about the market rate component. Um, I, um, I definitely think that the parking perspective, um, I understand it. I think uh, most of these people are gonna be leaving during the day and coming back at night. Um, and I've walked through those garages in the evening just to answer the question myself as far as whether people uh, could find a spot. Um, and I think, I, think, I think they can. Okay, well, I'm glad to hear it's in the garage. Yes. There's oh, yeah. plenty of space, so thank you for that. Yes, it will be in the garage. If, any other questions or comments from the board? Madam Chair, Larry. Go ahead, Larry. Um, just a question you had mentioned. First of all, I'm excited to know that El Veras is going to reopen eventually because 
that was a nice little local business for the city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you had mentioned at the end of your um, review about basement amenities. What is it? Is that like laundry facilities, storage? What's I didn't really catch all of that. I'm sorry. So just um, the only thing in the basement is laundry and storage. Um, the elevator will go down there. Um, and so we'll have, you know, bike storage down there. We'll have storage bins for people to use, you know, for whatever they're not using every day. Um, so it's okay. Thank you. Just was curious. Yep. All right. Any other board members? If not, we'll open it to public comment. Anybody wishing to make a public comment, please um, use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of the screen. Uh, just hover over that and it will uh, indicate that uh, you wish to speak and press star nine if you're on the phone joining us. And Madam Chair, I do not see anyone raising their hand at this time. All right, we'll close public comment uh, and we'll open it up for a vote, a motion. Motion to grant. Second. Roll call, James? Yes. Larry? Yes. Corita? Yes. Tony? Yes. All right, thank, thank you, John. You. Thank you, everyone. And thanks, Pam. I'm glad I got in before. Congratulations. You <laughs> I will try to take care of this before I go. <laughs> <laughs> we got most of the way there. Congrats on retirement. Thank you. Right. Thank you all. Have a great night. You too. You Moving soon. on to number four on the agenda, 161 Mulberry Street, Mass Electric, National Grid. Representative is Vantage Builders. Yes. Moving people over to panelists. I've got Alex. I've got Mark. Um, Mr. Cardinal, will you be joining us? Joe? I'm moving you heck just for the heck of it. And I believe that is the whole team, correct? I think so. Mm. Um, uh, Amber Roberts is with us as well. Uh, she's the project manager. She did not raise her hand, therefore she does not get to talk. I'm okay with that. Bad Amber. <laughs> She's coming over now. Well, she was, where'd she go? There. Oh, and I've got Mike from National Grid. Are you coming over? I think that's everybody. Um, I think I'm the person to kick off. Please let me know. Go ahead, floor is yours. Okay, Madam Chair. Uh, may I share my screen? Well, let me uh, introduce Al Trachimus is uh, I'm Mark Mesh, Winter Street Architects. Um, most of the show tonight is Al Trachimus. He's the civil engineer. Uh, I see we have Joe Carroll and Joe Cardinal from National Grid, Mike Guerin, um, and then Amber Roberts, who is um, with JLL, the owner's project manager for this project. Um, if I could share my screen. I have just a couple of clicks here to, to help sort of orient things. Um, so we're here for site plan approval. We've been through the technical review process. Um, before your break, I understand you take a, uh, an interval off during the summer. This is for 161 Mulberry Street, the health services building for um, National Grid. Let me make sure I can click through here. There we go. Um, so are you seeing my screen? Is it working? Yes, we are, thank you. Okay, so the project itself is at the south end of the site along East Ashland. Mulberry Street's on the left, on the west side. Um, and 
the address for the parcel is 161 Mulberry. Um, you can see the green roof of the existing building there. Um, and there's an existing curb cut. You can see those two red arrows there, get a little bit closer. Um, the project here is on the right-hand side. Um, and you can see the footprint, the building footprints in yellow, handful of parking spaces and, and, and proximity to the property line and trees and what have you. I'll let Al go into the details there, but I just wanted you to see, be able to see where we are on the site. Also, I wanted to share a little bit. It's a fairly small building, 1,620 square feet. It's an all new building, but it's actually uh, an existing function on site. It serves the, um, the crews, the personnel from National Grid. Um, and it has, I'm sorry, it's, it's aligned along this existing uh, driveway. There's an existing gate that's more or less stays. We need to tweak it a little bit. We're adding a new pedestrian gate. Um, the main entrance is here. Reception for those folks coming in. Um, we've got two handicapped water closets. Um, National Grid's directed me to make everything accessible, um, especially in new construction. Um, the staff right now, I think, is two people, but we have space for three. Um, they're currently in the, the main building. And there are two PT slash exam rooms. Right now, uh, some of this function is rather ad hoc. They do some of the PT in one of their crew rooms, which is essentially a conference room. Um, and part of the purpose of this building is to improve that service to their employees and staff um, because it's not very private, confidentiality is at risk, those sorts of things. Um, and this will be better. Um, we also have an audiology booth for testing hearing and you know, sort of baselining and monitoring that with the employees um, and a small staff room in the back. Um, this is kind of a rough cut of it. It's a small scale building, um, fairly residential in its sort of makeup, but we're trying to keep a low profile from Mulberry Street. Um, and with that, I think Al, you're up. Uh, that's the perfect, that's the perfect plan to have up. Mark took about 50% of my uh, presentation, so, which is good. So I won't, I won't go, I'm trying not to backtrack. The key is in the lower right-hand side is the existing driveway coming in from East Ashland Street. That will not change. And as we come in, you'll see, as we head toward the building, there is a handicap space there that is fully van accessible handicap space. And then after we pass through the gate is where we have the standard parking spaces, which are all 10 by 20s, which are a good size space. So if anybody's got the big SUV or the full size pickup, they should fit well in there. The other item from a civil standpoint is that we have all municipal services here will be connecting to municipal water, municipal sewer um, in East Ashland Street. And uh, right where Mark's cursor is right now, if he drops it down a little bit, perfect. There's the existing utility pole right there. We'll be bringing a riser down that pole and we'll feed an underground electric service cable, whatever is needed into the, into the new building. And beyond that, we do have, we are increasing some impervious area. And you'll see the two trees that are along East Ashland Street behind the, just a little bit to the left of that mock, you'll see catch basin number one. And then on the opposite side of the building is catch basin number two. Those discharge into dry wells, which recharge back to the groundwater. So we're mitigating any increase in stormwater. We are recharging it back to the ground. And as you can see, as Mark brings that in a little bit, the on the left-hand side of the screen, you see three rather big pine trees. One's a 24-inch, one's a 15 and for some reason, we don't have the size of the third one, but those are all remaining. And then along, oh, we can zoom out a little bit there or bring it over toward East Ashland now, Mark. 
one of the comments that we had was the from technical review was to show some shade trees along East Ashland Street. You'll see there that we've added in two northern pin oaks along East Ashland. Then along the abutting property to the top, there are existing trees there as well. And those are to remain. And they're a little on the substantial side. They're all, there are three, the first three from Ashland Street, the 12 inch fir tree or pine trees. And then there's a deciduous, a 12 inch there as well. As for additional screening, we're going to be adding a row of 16 arborvitaes to further screen the back of the building. And from Mark's architectural view, you saw this is a rather low profile building, one story. So the screening will be done rather well. And then the rest of the area will be lawn. And then we will have, there is in the parking area when you first come in the property, there is an existing flagpole there with our American flag on it that is going to remain and the light will be relocated. So it will be lit as well. So from an engineering standpoint, the traffic is not an issue. We're utilizing the existing drive, uh, the existing driveway. It's a relocation from the next door building for the proposed health services. Uh, the utilities are there. We've got some decent landscaping here as well. And I would just like to open it up to any questions that the board may have. I don't have any. Do I ask the other board members? So oh, there is a, a pedestrian swing gate. Is that existing? Yes. Or, okay, that's why it's there. I was wondering why it's there. Um, actually, so right now there's all fence. The building's going to serve for part of the perimeter fence. That's a new gate, isn't it, Al? I take it back. I thought, I'm sorry, I thought the reference was to the existing gate across the driveway. The swing gate is a new swing gate. And yeah. the reason for that is the main facility itself is fenced off for security purposes. So that swing gate uh, separates the building from the uh, provides security to the remainder of the property so that at night when the facility is not being used that that will be locked. I think it's going to be card swipe, you know, security like the main gate. Okay, any other questions or comments from the board? Okay, we'll open it up to public. Members of the public who wish to comment on this project, please use the raise your hand icon. Um, and um, uh, star nine, if you are um, calling in on phone. And I do not see anyone with a hand up, Madam Chair. Okay, we'll close the portion of the public comment. Um, is there a motion? Motion to approve with standard conditions. Second. Roll call, James? Yes. Larry? Yes. Rita? Yes. Tony? Yes. All right, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Moving thank on you. to number five, Primary Subdivision, 21 Flint Road. We have Monty Construction, Representative J.K. Ongren. You're up, Scott. All right. I'm ready, Madam Chair. The floor is yours, Scott. All right. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Planning Board members, Scott Farrier from Holmgren Engineering. Uh, I have 
I may also have attorney Burke with me. I'm not sure if you see him in the waiting I room. I found him. Okay. Uh, what I have for you tonight is a preliminary subdivision that consists of three existing homes, three existing lots, two on East Street, uh, 655 East Street, and uh, 650, uh, 567 East Street, sorry. And they're, they're two rather large lots, about 80,000 square feet. They stretch uh, back about 600 feet uh, in a westerly direction towards Flint Road. Then we have one lot on Flint Road uh, that consists of about 20,000 square feet existing. And Are you able to put your plans up, sir? I believe I am, Rob. Excellent. If not, we've got Evan as backup. Do you see that? No, we do not. Oh, God. I don't know. Have All the right. kids gone back to school already? <laughs> All right, wait a minute. I'm hitting this shit. All right, wait a minute. We got action. There we go. You see that? There we go. Nice. We're getting there. Yes. All right. It's taken a couple of years, but I'm getting there, Madam Chair. Bravo. All right, so I'm zooming up a little bit. There we go. So it, it's a little bit hard to, uh, to tell what I'm doing, but I'm trying to show you in green is the existing lots, the existing configuration of the three lots. And I know we're looking at a blank screen right now. All right, I'm going to stick with that view. So I have highlighted in green the existing three lots. Uh, this long rectangle right here that gets almost the Flint Road. That is the first house on East Street. The second long rectangle is the second house on East Street. And then this kind of long, skinny rectangle fronts on Flint Road. Uh, that's the existing home for 21 Flint Road. So what we're looking to do, and again, that, that's about an 18,000 square foot existing house. So what we're looking to do is to reconfigure those three lots uh, to create a brand new lot highlighted in pink right here, lot B. And lot B would contain 30,000 square feet. Lot A, the existing home, would be reconfigured, uh, give it more of a backyard than it currently has, and would have 12,000 square feet Lot C and D, the existing homes on E Street would have in excess of about 75,000 square feet. Uh, so that's the preliminary subdivision plan we have before you folks tonight. And our, our main purpose uh, before you guys is to get before, uh, to get permission to go before the ZBA uh, for relief uh, for the lots. So that's, uh, in a nutshell, that's what we have, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you, Scott. We'll open it up to the board members for questions or comments. Uh, Madam Chair, it's Larry. Scott, just uh, yeah. some question on um, some of these lots because I was just reviewing some notes about it to um, expand the rear property line of lot A to match the rear property line of lot B. Okay. And reduce the proposed driveway on lot B to a 24 foot wide. I'm just trying to visualize these on, on your sketch here now. Yeah, we've got, we've got the, the proposed driveway right there is uh, probably about 36 feet wide, kind of a, an extra parking bay off to the side of the garage. We, we could certainly do that. Uh, and obviously the, Lot C and Lot D, those are, their street frontage is, is on E Street. That's correct. Obviously, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So the frontage is not changing. It's just the area we're chopping off the. Right. So we're not reducing any frontage is, I guess, was the question I was getting to. That is correct. We're not touching the frontage at all. All right. Um, I don't have any other questions. Other board members? I'm good. 
We'll open up to public comment. I'm sorry, I was muted. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have any public comment, um, please uh, use the raise your hand icon um, or press star nine if you're calling in on phone. And I believe we are also joined by Councillor Nicastro. I don't know uh, if, if you would like to address the board, please take, take this time. Yes, I have some questions. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'm wondering, is the name of the property owner or one of the property owners, Joseph Maurice or Maurice Joseph? Because I see it both ways on the application. It is Joseph Maurice, Councillor. Okay. Um, they signed their name on the second page of the application, Maurice Joseph in two places. So I wondered about that. And then looking at your plan, preliminary subdivision plan, um, there's a lot next to the existing dwelling at the corner of Flint and Sinclair. And the information on the assessed owner is not accurate. The assessed owner listed here is the one on the other side of the proposed lot B. Um, in this one, it's the assessor is 121-178, you can fill it in yourself. Okay, thank you. And then I'm wondering about, I see that uh, with the existing dwelling on East Street, you're gonna put a chain link fence around it. So you're gonna have all this land, which is part of lot C running in between that chain link fence and lot B. And so I'm wondering, is it wet? What's the use of it going to be? I would imagine it's going to remain in the current use that it, uh, you know, in its current use, Councilor. It's, it's and what a, is the current use? It's just wooded land. It's a, a bunch of land beyond that, uh, beyond that existing fence that they own, but they don't use. Okay. And what is the relief that the house on East Street is going to need from the zoning board? Uh, both lots will need uh, will need frontage relief. Okay. And what about lot A? What will it need? Lot A will need uh, frontage and area and uh, lot width. Okay. And to your knowledge, is lot C wet? I don't believe so. No. So this doesn't have to go to Conservation Commission. That's correct. Okay, thank you. That's all I have right now. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Rob, anyone else for raising their hand? Uh, oh, I'm I sorry, do... I do have one more question. Please That's all right. There's a letter dated March 15th to the city clerk saying that the prior plan was uh, denied by a vote of 4-0. And so I'm wondering how was it different and why was it denied? Sure, the, uh, well, the, the main difference was lot D, uh, number 557 uh, East Street was not included in the, uh, in the parcel. So we, we didn't have this. We were not squaring off lot A like we are now. Uh, the green lot line at the back of lot A uh, was remaining. So it was, uh, it was basically a, about a 9,000 square foot lot with only about a, a five or a 10 foot rear yard setback. So by introducing that new lot uh, from E Street, it, it squared up and increased the area for lot A. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you. And Madam Chair, I do not see any other hands up at this time. Okay. Is there a motion? Motion to approve uh, with the following conditions to expand the rear property line of lot A to match rear property line of lot B and reduce the proposed driveway on lot B to 24 feet wide. 
Second. Is there a second? Second. All right. Uh, roll call, James? Yes. Larry? Yes. Farida? Yes. Tony, yes. All right, thank you, Scott. Thank you, folks. Okay, moving on, number six, preliminary subdivision, 70 Brookside Ave, Eusebio Oliveira, and it's Scott again, J.K. Holmgren. Yes, thank you. Uh, again, Scott your, Barry, Holmgren Engineering. Scott uh, is your client here? He may be. Uh, again, Attorney Burke is helping me out, earning his money tonight. Uh, Yasubio Oliveira may be here. I'm not oh, sure. Oh, there he is. I see, I see him. him. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, am I still sharing the screen, Mr. May? Yes, you are, sir. Good. All right. Uh, all right. Again, uh, Scott Ferry, Holmgren Engineering, Madam Chair, uh, representing Isubio Oliveira, who owns property on Brookside Ave. Uh, it's a, an interesting piece of property. Uh, has a significant amount of frontage on Brookside Ave, about 250 feet of frontage. And then there's two existing home sites uh, right in this area here. And then there's another 47 feet of frontage in this area. And then a large, uh, a large area in the back. Uh, there's a couple of buildings on the site, a big uh, parking area, and uh, an interesting feature to the property. The, it's basically surrounded by wetlands. There's wetlands way in the back, but there's also a wetland that cuts uh, right through the back end of lots A, B, and C. Uh, a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of a, an intermittent stream, a, a stream that kind of runs during the during a wet season. Uh, and to gain access to this back land, uh, there's a bridge right on the side, uh, not a bridge, a culvert, right on the side of Lot C. So the driveway goes uh, over the wetland, basically over the water and gets to this, uh, to this back land here. That's the way it's always been, uh, uh, you know, for, for the whole property. That's how they've always gained access to the back piece. So what we're looking for, again, is, is a preliminary subdivision approval uh, to get to the Board of Appeals and to hopefully divide the property into four lots, three residential lots up in the front, which would have uh, 80 feet of frontage and a little over 9,000 square feet of area. And then the fourth lot would have the 47 feet of frontage and all the remaining land, uh, which is about two and a half acres. Uh, the surrounding area is surrounded by mostly small lots. They're all 6,000 square foot lots, uh, mostly single family homes. We would be looking to propose three single family homes on the property. Uh, the houses would all meet the zoning setbacks uh, as far as front side and rear yard setbacks go. Uh, we would be looking for relief from the planning board, uh, both for frontage and area. Uh, and the, the three house lots, if we receive ZBA approval, would need conservation approval. That is it, Madam Chair. Okay. Open it up for planning board questions, comments. Madam Chair, if, if I could. Sure. Um, God. It, it, it's really a, a mess of a property and, um, you know, being completely surrounded by the wetlands and how Lot C is the only access to lot D, um, although there is a claim of frontage on um, lot D. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to zoom at all. Yeah, I'm just trying to get it back now, Rob. It'll be there in a minute. There's a claim of frontage on uh, lot D uh, which is, um, uh, I think it was 75 feet, but it's not usable frontage because you can't cross the brook um, to get to the back of the property. So it's, it's effectively cutting off uh, lot D unless there is an easement across lot C. And I don't know if that's been addressed by um, uh, this plan. And then all three of those parcels um, 
are going to be in the flood zone. And if you were to draw the flood zone on the map uh, or on the plan, I don't know how much of that site is buildable. So that's another um, thing for you all to take into consideration. Seems to be a multitude of, of, of issues. Um, any other board Evan, members? are you able to draw that, pull that up? Uh, what's that? Um, the site plan for Brookside? Yeah. Oh, there we go. I've got it back, Rob. Oh, okay. So, Scott, <laughs> you, you, you're aware that this is located in a flood zone? Yes. So that you know that would be part of the conservation filing that we would uh, that we would have to deal with, Madam Chair. And, and who who owns the land for the proposed um, changes for drainage? Well, the because it's single family homes uh, proposed, there would be no drainage uh, required or proposed. Any other comments, questions from board members before we open it up to the public? Councillor um, Castro. Yes, thank you. Good evening again. Um, I, I was gonna say, because that's not just wetlands, that's the French brook. And I get a lot of calls about it. It really swells in the swing, spring and the fall. So I do wonder <clears throat> whether, um, how, how much land you'd have left over and whether these people just wouldn't be swimming. Um, also, I did speak to and abutter to the proposed lot D, David Swanson. He's on Brookside Avenue. Um, he got no notice of this. I wasn't sure if there was a notice requirement for a preliminary subdivision. He received no notice of this hearing this evening. Um, and also uh, looking at this plan, it seems to me that the other point of access for Lot D would be Monarch Street. Correct. But it still, it involves going over wetlands, I think. And I'm wondering what is gonna happen to the concrete foundation that is on Lot D? And are you gonna do an environmental assessment? Because I, Mr. Swanson tells me that used to be a tannery. Oh. Um, could we first address uh, the concern of the abutter not getting a notice? Pam, do you have a return receipt or? Madam Chair, I think preliminaries don't require. They do not. Oh, That's what I suspected. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Um, and also, if you look at the, the, the city GIS map, the assessor's map, um, the French Brook actually runs along the side of this lot, proposed lot C, and then crosses over Brookside Avenue and continues on toward Glen Avenue. Um, so I, I just wonder about your access to the back land. It, it would be through the existing driveway culvert uh, right there on lot C. Oh, so there would be an easement to cross. They're right, exactly. When we got to the definitive stage, we would have to provide an easement for, for lot D. So you'd be going for a driveway as opposed to something the width of a road. Right. It would be it, it would be a driveway for a for a single family home. And what would the use of lot D be? At this point, I think it's going to remain open space. I I, I don't know that the owner uh you know, has any particular use at, at this point, Council. But you mentioned that A, B, and C will be single family homes. That's correct. And what about the land to the right, the place, the place where Lot D butts out to Brookside Avenue to the right of Mr. Swanson's property? What will that be? It'll be part of Lot D, uh, you know. Yes, it, true. Right. There's, uh, it's part of Lot D. There's a there's an opportunity to get access to the backland if we had a conservation filing and and filled some wetlands. Uh, at this point, we don't have any. The owner doesn't have any plans for Lot D. Uh, so it's just that's the another piece of frontage that it has, as you said, in addition to the Monarch Street frontage. 
I think there is concern that building on lots A, B, and C will affect the flow of water and all that and, and therefore affect existing homes on either side. Uh, if I may, uh, Madam Chair, uh, I mean, that, that Councilor Year, that's an excellent point, excellent question. And that very much will be an issue that have to be dealt with with Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, be, and that specifically is the purview of what uh, the, the zoning ordinance requires. So uh, all of those questions would have to be met to the satisfaction of the Zoning Board and uh, they would be vetted uh, prior to uh, any approvals, that's for sure. Rob, any other, any hands raised for public comment? Um, this, anybody from the public wishing to comment on this proposal, please raise your hand uh, or press star nine if you're on a phone. And I do not see any hands up at this time. Okay, so we'll close that portion. And is there a motion? Motion to deny. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. James? Yes. Larry? Yes. Rita? Yes. Tony? Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you, folks. Thank you very much, Madam Chair and members of the board. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Moving on, number seven. Another preliminary subdivision, 652 North Cary Street, Cohen Estates is the applicant and PMP Associates is the representative. Scott, is this still one of your cases? Uh, it is not, Rob. Okay. I'm put on. The, I'll yeah. put you in the back for the second, for a second. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, if we pull, oh, I see uh, Jacobs. Let me pull him forward. Trading engineers. Okay, so who's speaking for this applicant? Ed Jacobs will, and there he goes, finally. Sorry. Okay, the floor is yours, Mr. Jacobs. He's just getting here now. Ed, the floor is yours. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Rob. Madam Chair, uh, my name is Eddie Jacobs, PMP Associates, and I'm representing David and Dalian Cohen for this preliminary subdivision plan. Um, can we share that plan, Evan, or I can share my screen, whatever you want to do. I think it'd be easier for you to share your screen if you can. Okay. Evan is having some problems. Let me know when that pops up. Can we see it yet? Yeah. Sure. Yes, we can. Okay. So this is a um, preliminary plan showing a two lot subdivision of property located at 652 North Cary Street. And that would be bounded by this, pretty much this rectangle right here, all the way around. Um, property currently lies in an R1C zone it contains 80,509 square feet or about 1.85 acres with 152.3 feet of frontage on North Cary Street. Proposed lot one, which is a bigger lot in the back of the proposed house would consist of 50,496 square feet with 50 feet of frontage along North Cary Street and would be a single family home to be built for the Cohens. Uh, proposed lot two would consist of 30,113 square feet with 102.3 feet of frontage and would keep the existing dwelling up front here and the existing garage in the back. Um, the garage 
<clears throat> I'm sorry, the access driveway utilities for lot two would all remain. And the access to lot one would be via this paved 20 foot wide driveway, uh, approximately 350 feet in length with a with an emergency um, vehicle turnaround and right at the very end of it at its terminus. Uh, that's pretty much the project in a nutshell. Um, and I would take any questions at this time. Okay, open up to the board members. Questions, comments? Is the original lot conforming as is now? No, it lacks frontage. Existing lacks frontage? Yeah, it has 152.3 feet and an I1C needs 175. So the, the request would be to be more non-conforming? For that lot, yes, but it's a sub. It's yeah, we're going for a two lot subdivision. Uh, okay. would have to go, um, if you approve the you know, to go ahead with the prelim, then our next stop would be to the ZBA. Other questions, comments, board members? Okay, we'll open up for public comment. And Evan, if you have some comments, you can. Feel free to jump in. Uh, members of the public, if you wish to comment on this project, please use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of the screen uh, or press star nine if you're on the telephone. I do not see any members of the public with comments. Um, if there's staff comments, this would be a good time. So I have I have a question. So uh, it, when it goes to the zoning board, they need to apply for the variance, right? Correct. And okay. So if if the zoning board approved, um, then we would have to come back to the planning board for a definitive subdivision, at which time we would. Um, draw a full set of plans, request waivers for, you know, roadway curbing, uh, that sort of thing. Um, and it would be a more detailed plan, um, maybe showing roof infiltrators and things of that nature. Grading. Yeah. I mean, now the plot lot is non-confirming, so we are going, going to make two non-confirming lot. So, Correct. Yeah. Yeah. The <laughs> thing is, it's a large lot, it's almost two acres in an area, um, but the hardship is, it, it just lacks the frontage. Uh, Madam Chair, may I make a comment, please? Um, I think one of the biggest issues with that we have with this is the shape of it. They're called like a pork chop slash flag lot. Right. It's basically that P shape where we have the big chunk in the back and that little skinny bit Mm -hmm. that follows the driveway to the front. Um, now I believe that is pretty much why we have the minimum lot width zoning ordinance is to prevent these type of lots from forming. Um, it's supposed to be 125 feet wide, at least 100 feet back from where the frontage is measured right at the road here. Um, and this is I'm not sure exactly how it is. It's less than 50, about 40 something or so until it gets that little flare out mm -hmm. uh, at the end. So, Unfortunately, the city of Rockland doesn't have what a lot of the neighboring towns have in some cities as like Stoughton has retreat lots or estate lots for just this purpose because you have these older neighborhoods that have um, maybe not have the frontage but have the area, but you know, at 175 feet of frontage and a city uh, as congested as Brockton, it's almost impossible to find uh, a property that you can do a two lot subdivision on and maintain uh, that building square that you're talking about. So without having a retreat lot or an estate lot provision in your bylaw, um, you know, you have to go through this route. I mean, there's plenty of these lots in surrounding towns that look like this, but they fall under the estate law provision, which you don't have. So we're forced to go with a two lot subdivision and a, um, 
you know, go to zoning. I mean, the 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 buildings where you have plenty of room with a with a proposed house that's being built, you can see the size of that area in the back and um, the size of that house. So, how long is the driveway? Three hundred and fifty feet. So, if a fire truck enter, then th there's no way he needs he can you know uh, come back straight, right? Well, I'll let, I'll let Deputy out. Chief Williams speak to that, but we have done this before in town and we've put a turnaround. You can see by the, um, the end of the driveway where we have that turnaround. And it's a 20 foot wide driveway. Chief Williams, any comment? I'd... Uh hold my comments to see what the zoning board did at that point in time. Okay. I would say that the zoning board and the planning board did allow two similar lots right down the street um, yes. that are very similar. Um, I, I personally am not in favor of them, but um, we'll see what the chief does on the zoning board with the other members. Okay. Uh, Rob, we did close the public portion. There was no raised hands. Um, there are no raised hands at this point in time. All right, is there a motion? Motion, motion to deny. Second. Roll call, Larry? Yes. James? Yes. Rita? Yes. Tony? Yes. Thank you. Okay, hey, thank you. All right. Moving on, number eight, definitive subdivision, two proposed lots. Property is 432 Crescent Street. Applicant is signed here, investments. Representative Scott with J.K. Holmgren. Moving Scott in. Scott, is there anybody else in your team here? So if there's anybody with Scott, please raise your hand. I may be by myself. You are running solo. <laughs> All right. It we'll put so. up. All right. Uh, again, thank you, Madam Chair. Scott Ferry, Holmgren Engineering. Uh, I have before you tonight a definitive subdivision uh, proposing two lots that front on Crescent, Henry, and Moulton Street. We were before you folks back in April for a preliminary subdivision plan. Actually, we were before you even earlier than that, back in January or February for a, a three-lot plan where we hope to get two lots on Crescent Street, the existing home and a brand new lot. And then the one lot that we're currently showing on Moulton Street, uh, you folks weren't happy with that plan at all. We uh, revised that plan, came up with this two-lot plan, came to you folks in April, you received, uh, you granted us uh, permission to go ahead to the ZBA. We went to the ZBA in May and received ZBA approval for the plan uh, that you see. Okay. I'm going to try to show it to you again, Madam Chair. Uh, there we go. I don't know if that's me. Yeah, that is me. All right. Thank you. All right, so there is lot A. As I said previously, we, we tried to get an additional lot up in this corner. Uh, of Crescent Street uh, and, and with the parking situation and cars backing out onto Crescent Street, you folks weren't happy with that. Uh, so we revised it as uh, as you see with lot A uh, having a, a good bit of frontage on Crescent Street, uh, access and frontage on Henry, and then our new lot, uh, lot B uh, coming off of Moulton Street. It's got a two car garage. <laughs> Water and sewer, municipal water and sewer will also come off of Moulton Street, Madam Chair. Okay. Sorry, does that conclude your yes, presentation? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, planning board members? So, lot A is a three family, right? Yes. Yep. It's a three family, right? An existing three family. Okay, and I see a recommendation, no further subdivision of lot A. Correct. Okay. Um, any other comments, suggest, uh, questions, sorry. 
Planning board before we open up to the public. I've seen this a few times. I'm, I don't have any questions. Okay. All right. Public. Members of the public, if you wish to speak, please use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of your screen. Um, otherwise, press star nine if you're on a mobile phone. And I do not see anybody with their hand up. Oh, hang on. I got a hand up. Is it Angel? Angelina. Angelina, sorry. Um, no, it's okay. Um, go ahead and address the board. Um, I just have a question on the lot that will be placed on Moulton Street. How far back will the driveway be? Uh, the yeah, the, the, the house is proposed to be 32 feet from the street, uh, you know, which is probably close to about 40 feet from the actual pavement of Moulton Street. But from the lot line, the house is 32 feet back. The garage will be 34 feet back. From here, it just seems like that's going to be extremely um, tight squeeze there because right in front of it is a property which is 44 Moulton Street. And on the side, you're going to have the existing, um, which there's already currently property on Crescent Street, you're going to have the three cars facing Henry Street. That's correct. So our driveway is coming off of Moulton. Uh, and actually, our if you, you can see it on the plan, our house is set back further than all of the existing homes uh, on Moulton Street. So we're meeting the zoning requirement for the front setback. For our, okay. Anything else, Angelina? No, that'd be all right now. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Any other hands raised? I do not have any other hands raised at this time. Okay, so we'll close that portion. Is there a motion? Motion to grant. There a second? Second. Roll call. James? Yes. Larry? Yes. Marita? Yes. Tony? Yes, to approve. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Have a good night. You too. Okay, moving on Scott, to Scott Surety. Oops. Scott. Oh, my and God. Has Scott has left the building. Scott has gone and we have no sureties, so we cannot. Can someone email him, text him? We will text him. It'll probably be the lot. Okay. Uh, oh, it's a, two, right. it's a two division, two house subdivision. Mm -hmm. It'll probably be cash, but um, we'll follow. It'll up. probably be the existing house, but still, we need, you yeah, know. We need, we'll get him to send that in writing. Okay, thanks. Uh, number nine, definitive subdivision, plot two, Belgravia Ave, lots four. Applicant Joel Hull and Representative Silva Engineering. I think there's a lot coming over for this. I've got Rebecca and there's Larry. And it's another Rebecca, so I'm assuming this is not Rebecca, you're not there twice, are you? No, I think Rebecca Silva. Engineering is the one we want. Right. So who's representing this applicant? Is that Joe? Yes. Okay. All right, are we ready to proceed, Rob? Uh, yes, we are. Okay. All right, the floor is yours. Joe Cully, is it Cull or Cully? Uh, Cooley. Cooley, okay. And, and Rebecca's the engineer. Um, and I think her boss, Larry I think Silva. Larry, yeah, I think Larry mm -hmm. Silva needs to brought, be brought over, Rob. I had promoted him and he declined to promote. But I will try one more time. How do you get your picture on this thing? <laughs> he may just trust his staff. Okay. Which I don't know about. 
Right, nope, the floor there, is there yours, is. Bill. There he is. Uh, Belgravia Ave and uh, um, we, Show, if you yeah. could go, if you hover your cursor down at the bottom, yeah. um, you'll see a, a uh, icon that looks like a video camera. Uh, recording? Uh, not the recording one, but it, it should say stop, start video or stop video. I do not see that. I see, oh, we're over here. Okay. On the left hand side. Yep, I'm sorry. And that should turn on your camera. Okay, Rob. video. Go to video settings, choose. Vi go. Evan, did you have a suggestion? Yeah, uh, Rebecca asked for you to bring the other Rebecca over as well. I think that's her uh, phone that she's listening in on. Okay. As long as we don't get feedback. I'm on the start video, but I don't see how to start it. It just isn't. Uh, on the bottom of the screen, Joe. Video? Yeah. Hey. Good well, who's somebody. gonna make the presentation? I, I'll be making the presentation. And Rebecca will be handling the uh, the screen. Okay, well then let, we'll do Larry. But you give Rebecca the control of the screen. All right, so I'll block me out. Okay, uh, are we ready? Yes. I'm on, I'm okay. on the screen. Okay, um, I am, I, my name is Larry Silva from Silver Engineering Associates. Offices are in uh, Bridgewater, Massachusetts. Also with me, another engineer is Rebecca Baptista, who is with me tonight. And uh, my client, Joe Cooley uh, from Bushkill Properties is also on for this evening. So this is a this is a, a property on um, Belgravia and also involves Herman Street, and it was a project that we got involved in after it had already been presented to you. On your agenda, it shows as a four lot subdivision, and when we first came into it, it was a four lot subdivision. Uh, there were many comments uh, and a lot of hurdles to deal with as it related to engineering for the uh, for the four lot subdivision. And, um, and as you can see right there on the screen there, yeah, that's the configuration that was there. For the four lot, you can see there were three lots on, on Belgravia, one on Herman, and it included uh, extensive uh, drainage and other uh, work that was within the buffer zone to the wetlands. That's the yellow line that goes across uh, the plan right there. So uh, after going back and forth with both Conservation Commission uh, and with uh, engineering uh, and the DPW and everyone who chimed in on it, consultants and so forth. Um, we uh, convinced Joe that um, he really needed to scale back the project by 25% and actually go back to a, um, a three lot subdivision. So, uh, so here is the configuration that is before you now. As you can see, it's a lot less invasive in terms of its of the work that's in proximity to um, uh, the wetlands and, and so forth. All activity is outside of that yellow line. Conservation was satisfied when we did that, uh, that they felt as though that uh, there was no real jurisdiction on their part and that they didn't need to participate any further. Um, this project uh, is simply um, to build on a vacant lot, which is on Herman Street and then on vacant lots that are on Belgravia, but by only doing the two lots, um, it's a lot, lot less uh, of a project. We're still providing for um, improvements on Belgravia Avenue, including a turnaround at the end for fire, uh, for fire truck, fire access, and also still providing for stormwater management. Uh, as you can see that that whole area that was originally the third lot and additionally, part of the other drainage lot that was there um, is being used in order to handle the water uh, that comes off of the improvements from uh, Belgravia and from the houses. Um, also a benefit on this project is that we're going to be bringing sewer uh, up where sewer is now on Herman, uh, but it's not on Belgravia. We're going to be able to bring sewer up to this area and that's gonna provide for a resource uh, to the houses that are along the existing houses there, and also obviously 
uh, be able to provide sewer service to the new houses that we're proposing on Belle Cravia. Um, we have gone through um, a lot of um, iterations um, with, uh, with everyone, uh, the comment letters back and forth, the drainage um, calculations and, and design. And for every storm event, uh, from a two-year storm to a hundred-year storm, um, we are uh, reducing the peak rate of runoff so that it is less than what the uh, runoff is for existing conditions. Um, we provided um, to the right of that second house in that drainage area, we provided a berm um, to the houses that are on the other side on Herman in order to not allow for water to flow in that direction. Um, we provided for um, a stone um, water quality and also uh, mitigation in terms of slowing down stormwater uh, as it does uh, migrate uh, uh, to the north. Um, and um, I think that overall, um, from where we started to where we are now, we, we believe that um, we've made this project a much better project. And then with your approval, uh, it would allow Joe to be able to go back to the zoning board and be able to uh, reinstate uh, a zoning uh, approval that he had before uh, for the uh, frontage issues that were basically on, uh, on Herman Street because that lot was an undersized lot. Um, we, the only thing we asked for, because there's a lot of infrastructure that has to be uh, dealt with here because this is really basically not a paved road, Belgravia. For the most part, uh, there's going to be it's going to be built out all the way. We ask that a waiver for sidewalk and, and granite to be able to use Cape Cod Berm. Um, those are the two things that we that we're looking for, and um, uh, and I, I ask that uh, you know that I'll answer whatever questions you might have. But this has been a long road getting to where we are. This is not something that happened overnight. Uh, it's taken a lot to, to get us to this point. And uh, we're hoping that the board can uh, uh, see to an approval this evening. So with that, I'd answer whatever questions that uh, board members might have. Um, thank, thank you for that. Um, Rob, it, there seems to be major concerns with the drainage, and he seemed to have addressed many of them. Is there something missing or that's not um, tying? Um, I, I will say that he has addressed a lot of the drainage issues, but, um, and, and I don't have access to the, uh, if you can pull the topography um, drawing up, uh, or the or, or uh, uh, site plan with the proposed elevations. Existing or proposed? Uh, proposed. All right. It's a split split view. Yes. So here's the, here's no, the that, two. That's okay. I'm looking for the uh, Belgravia side. In this okay. this one house that is at the corner, or the the first house that is that is being proposed. Um, we're changing the elevation. Um, the water currently flows from uh, bottom to the top, um, but we're changing the pitch of the of the uh, of the slope. And um, while behind the second house, we have a berm that is supposed to bring the water down into the uh, uh, detention area, um, this first house doesn't have um, that kind of protection. And without knowing what the elevation is directly behind the property, it may increase runoff um, towards Herman. Um, that's one concern. And then the second concern is um, you're creating three lots on Belgravia with the no, stormwater. Two. two lots. 
Oh, so there is not a lot line. Two Great. lots on Belgravia, one here oh. and one here. The third lot and on Belgravia was removed. Okay, so is that, no, it's, it's, but it's still a lot. It's a drainage lot. It's a drainage lot. And um, the city, uh, the DPW commissioner has asked that that subdivision line that that all be one lot so that the property owner is responsible for the detention pond um, as opposed to being on a standalone lot that could be abandoned at some point in time okay it is shown as a lot not as an easement that's Yes, they, they ha it has an easement for the water. That is true, right. but um, you know somebody is going to own that lot and have to pay taxes on it. And at the moment, it would be the applicant, but the applicant can stop paying taxes on it at any point in time. And then the city takes the lot, and it becomes the city's property to maintain the. Uh, uh, the stormwater management. We can change that to an easement owned by lot three. Well, I think what I think what he's saying is is that we should remove the line in between. Yes. Make that second lot just a large lot and make it a just one big large lot. lot. In yes. That lot. Yes. That 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 would be that would be acceptable. And to answer your other question though about the grading on the first lot. Um, as you can see, the roof, the, the house represents a good area, and the uh, roof drains are all being uh, taken. Uh, okay. So, so we're trying to mitigate uh, some of the site runoff by doing it uh, where it now kind of just heads in the direction of, of Herman Street. We're now trying to intercept some of it and actually bring it in and, and bring it into the ground. We're not increasing that uh, the amount that's leaving that area. If you look at those uh, contours underneath, there was a fair amount that was finding its way. Uh, that's yes. the lighter color contours are the gray ones, and the blue ones are the ones that are being proposed for changes. Not being a hydrologist um, or an engineer, just a guy who uses big words. Um, it 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 was a concern. Um, I, I don't know. I hope you can address it for the rest of the board. Yeah, because uh, also keep in mind that there was a lot of unmitigated runoff from the other side of Belgravia, Belgravia that came off those house lots, came across, and just sheet flowed across over to towards Herman Street. And now with Belgravia collecting the water on that street, um, we're actually mm -hmm. uh, improving that and making sure that that water doesn't find its way uh, just unmitigated. So I think the combination of the roof drainage and also uh, the improvements on Belgravia um, and the calculations that we're clearly showing that peak rates are runoff. Okay. I just know that the property owners on Herman have pro uh, have had problems um, that, you know, since the beginning of time. Yeah, um, some of those, some of those. Originally houses, those should have been at a higher elevation. Higher elevation. Uh, for foundations and floors. But if you feel that, um, you know, professionally, um, that that's not going to exacerbate the problem, no. that's something for the board to take into consideration. This has been reviewed by the city engineer as well. That is correct. Dr Madam Chair? So, Rob, is Chike stamping this? Chike feels that the um, uh, the runoff from the that, the that the engineering plans as they are now are, are fine and are not going to cause any uh, additional uh, problems. Okay. Uh, board members, questions? Madam Chair, it's Larry. Um, a question about the sidewalk, and I, I guess I need an education on it. Um, does it make a difference on water drainage from the street, whether it's a Cape Cod berm or your standard, I guess, granite curb or whatever? Does that make a difference or help 
any drainage issues because we've had a lot of feedback from the owners on Herman about water issues. So I'm curious about that, Mr. Silva. Uh, well, no, both of them serve the same purpose of, uh, of basically funneling water in the direction that you want to funnel it. Um, they're just different ways of doing it. And, uh, and obviously um, on a project which doesn't really have a, a huge margin when you're talking about a couple of house lots here. Um, having having this all be granite uh, is 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 a, a lot more expense. That's the reason. It's not because of the function. Because Cape Cod Berm does the same thing. And this road is gonna is this road going to be paved by the applicant? Yes, sir. That, it's going to be paved, and um, I. I I don't read plans the way you or Mr. May does, but uh, there are going to be some drainage culverts on that road added to the pavement. That's correct. Yes, they which, are. which they're not existing now. Right. You see where Rebecca's showing right now, there's catch okay. basins there connected to a manhole, which then takes it down to uh, another catch basin, uh, okay. two pair, another pair, and that's what's going into that stormwater management right. area. It's a big improvement on what's right. there. Now. In fact, the gentleman that owned that's across the street, uh, where, where that cursor is right now, there. I mean, he's he's always been supportive of this because he's been going down a, a, a dirt driveway uh, to his house for the longest time. That his house was built there without any improvements uh, to the road way back uh, when he was given a permit to do that. I don't know how many. Years. Right. Yeah, I don't know how that happened, but yeah. Yeah. He's at a higher elevation too, improvement though. For him at this point to have something uh, coming down as far as this is. Just wanted to comment that he is at a higher elevation. I, I don't imagine he has any water drainage issues. No, it's not the water drainage, but he has no sewer. Right. Uh, and he just got, uh, he, he's got to navigate a kind of a, a road that's not all that good. Right. No, that I um, that'd be a huge improvement on that road when it's finished. I no doubt in my mind. Absolutely. That's all I have for questions. Um, Rob, could you just reiterate the if this were to be approved, the um, the verbiage on one large lot for the ownership of the basin? I believe it was. Yes, we would want those two parcels to be combined. Um, on the, so that the on the mylar, yes, so that it belongs to that second house there on Belgravia. Absolutely. Okay. And then um, the chair. The, the above ground utilities that's all, all been addressed already. That would need to be a waiver. There should be no above ground utilities. And sidewalks need to be added. I, that's that's you were asking for a waiver for sidewalks. It's got Correct. a sidewalk it's on the because it's top. Really the two, these two, there's only two house lots here, and to be able to have to do sidewalk improvements all the way out to Winter Street just seems to be pretty excessive. For uh, it's kind of a it's a large burden on a guy just doing a couple house lots here. The third house lot we're talking about is not even on the street. And the, the fact that he's bringing sewer up here and so forth, uh, I mean, that's that's a real benefit to the city. It's just that's where we're just asking because his cost, you know, he's got quotes back for what it's taken for him just to get the infrastructure done here. And it's 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 making the, the three lots more and more marginal. Uh, the four lot, the four lots was making it uh, more palatable to be doing more of those improvements. But by losing that other lot, he um, it's, it's really tight. Mm -hmm. We're just asking some consideration in that. So so it becomes a successful project for all the reasons. Madam Chair, yes. I want to just point out that um, per the law department, all subdivisions contain the requirement for an HOA for the road the maintenance, the um, detention basin, and the lights until the roadway is accepted by the city of Brockton. 
Is your the only question I would have that? on that would be, is that where we have existing homes that are on the first pot of Belgravia? How do you, how do you invoke a, a nature way in those cases? I'm guessing your homes that you're building and the third one on Herman would need to be part of an HOA. Um, yeah, exactly. I can only read, yeah, I mean, that is, the re that is the request from the law department that when you build any kind of street, this is what they want. We're not building a street, we're building, we're improving an existing street. Mm -hmm. I think that's the distinction. If he's talking, the law department is talking about a new road and a new subdivision. So this is an existing road that you're going to pave. That's correct. Okay. I think that's the distinction. Um, it's a private road, so no. uh, it, it's um, it's still the responsibility of, of, of the homeowners. And so your plan for the uh, the utilities? Well, at the very minimum, the city doesn't take over the lights at all all right and until the road is accepted in the detention basin also that there would have to be a joint easement between all of the owners well the owner whose property it's well, on anyway. of, of the owner the two new so the deed the deed for the, the two owner, new houses that house lot would have to reflect that he has to Keep, the, keep that in, 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 in good repair. Yes. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. So the applicant's going to have to maintain the detention basin and the lights? I'm saying the owner of the second house in his deed would put with on him the responsibility of that drainage area because making that part of his lot. So he's the one that was going to be responsible for maintaining, like any other drainage easement that's not a property, uh, that person is responsible for maintaining uh, the drainage area. And how does that get written into, is it in the deed or how does this new, this person for lot two know that they're responsible? It would be one of the conditions of the subdivision that gets filed with the plan. Yes. Okay. So a lot too responsible for. Um, it's, it was it's standard language. And, and and just to clarify on the utilities, all the utilities uh, are underground, and the existing utility poles are uh, uh, were, were being used for electric for, for lighting, basically. Right, that's the thing that you need a waiver from because it's actually the lights that need to be underground for the rules and regs. So the power. you need a, a waiver. Yeah. Not Are you putting light. in a street light? And, uh, do you, and, and uh, I mean, just ask though, in lieu of that, do you, have you dealt with doing driveway lights instead? No, we have not. We have not, okay. And I, we spoke to the DPW commissioner and at this particular time, he wasn't entertaining that. Okay. For so those, various reasons. Those, those two homes on Belgravia are going to be responsible for the, the light. I, I, yeah, I guess, I mean, so, but what do you, I mean, what does that say because to the houses that are like it, you know, the other three houses that are on the other side of the street that are just in that area? Well, but they're just grandfathered in. I think one of the lots is uh, across from the house too. That is actually the back of a lot. Um, yeah, they use the that one that's across. Bit, well, they use that for and, access. And I, I'm sure they will be coming forward eventually to get a subdivision, because um, I certainly would. Um, but. It's it, actually it, it's, the owner is the, it's actually the the applicant. It's a square that's peg in a round hole. 
And so we have these really weird regulations that if you were building an entire subdivision, they make sense. But to right. do an extension of a road for two houses um, on, a, on a private way that you know the city's not gonna plow, the city's not gonna, it, it's not responsible for the lights. Uh, I don't know if there's any other street lights on the street. Do they plow it now? The dirt this road. Part, this, part, I, this part of it's not paved, so if they're plowing it, they're just making a mess. Right, yeah. they're probably plowing the top half, though. They shouldn't be. Well. So in, in regards to the waiver, shouldn't shouldn't that be be addressed first before we... Well, actually, we need to approve the subdivision, then the waivers, and then the surety. But before we do that, we have members of the public who may want to speak. Yeah, I was just wondering. I ha I was thinking reverse, but thank you for that correction. Any other questions or comments from board members before we open it up to the public? Okay, Rob, any raised hands? I have one. Um, and I will destroy oh, your that's name. That's true now. Say it. Hello. So Hello. All right. You're My name is Aristide Centeno. I own 29 Harmony Street. And from what Mr. Silva said, he, the person that owns he, the higher, the last house on Belgravia, he has not owned the house for a long time. I am an investor. I do invest in Brockton. And to tell you the truth, I was going after that house at one point just for a rental property because I do buy rental properties. The house was just purchased a few years ago, okay? And the person that, that did purchase it, yes, they was going with Mr. Cooley. Yes, there was. He, to get, he, 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 what is it called? To get sewer in there. Yes, there was. Which they already went after and put a septic tank in. Okay. He, the reason for Mr. Cooley to back off the third house is so he does not face conservation. I purchased my house in 2007 or 2006, okay? It's not only the runoffs, you have water, water that comes from under, under the ground, which I called the, the fire department multiple times of saying, okay, I have water in my basement. They come flush the toilet, guess what? He, it's, not, it, it's not the water problem, okay? There's water rising. So you keep on adding water and water, guess what? It's going to flood. We're all going to flood. There's a stream. You have multiple pictures, and he, the Conservation Commission has multiple pictures. He, it's like last week. Okay, last week, he, Nick Castro, which helped me a lot, to tell you the truth, he, I went to a tenant in his house, and they, they put the trash bins on the other side next to the, he, the other property owner, he, he, next to my other property. I said, no, that's not right. Okay, now it smells over there. I grabbed it. Guess what? I had to clean it, take out all the trash, bring it somewhere else and dump it. Because you can't move something and say, okay, I'm just going to take this out and just flood everybody. No, it doesn't work that way. Common sense is common sense. Hey, Mr. Silver could be the greatest engineer in the world. But we lived in this, these houses for so long. And we know what happens over here. And I, I don't know what else to say. It sounds good. But he, once you sell a house, a first-time buyer or whoever buys a house is not going to know, okay, he, I got to take care of, 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 the, of the water he, management. Nobody knows that. Come on. Who buys it? I'm excited. I just bought my first house. I don't pay attention to all the paperwork. No, I don't. I just bought my first house. My family's happy. It's a brand new house. Okay. He, Okay, I can't clean the sewer. I can't clean this. I can't maintain it. Now I have a lawsuit. I lose my house, my first house. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? For me to lose my first house? Everything I work for, this is what I paid for. This is what I worked. The American dream, everything. The white picket fence and everything. So you're telling me it's going to be written down, this, that, or what not. I make a lot of mistakes. Yes, I have. I learned from a lot of my mistakes. I own a lot of a lot a lot of properties in Brockton. Yes, I do. But what's not right is not right. What's wrong is wrong. I'm and I'm gonna say it. The gentleman that, that showed you guys the plan with we on Main Street over there, beautiful. 
That I will say because I was looking at that building, and that's all I have I have to say. Thank, Thank you. you. And now, um, Paul. You should be able to speak now, Paul. If you take your take your mute off. Paul, would you like to Paul disappeared? Mm -hmm. Oh. He's there. Oh, okay. can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, hi. Good evening. Hi. Um, good evening, board members. Um, my name is Paul Maliaco. I live at 35 Herman Street. I'm a direct abutter to this project. Um, and I just want to not exactly reiterate what um, Eric or Aristide said. He's my next door neighbor. But uh, water has been our primary concern, you know, since we've lived here. It's been our primary concern with this project. Um, you know, I've been going through this for since I bought my house in 2000. Um, um, and every engineering review, the one, the um, company we hired, um, Nova Armstrong Beta Group, they all said you cannot deposit the, the runoff to a single point. And as Eric said, the problem isn't really over surface flow, it's groundwater infiltration. And I don't see this management drainage lot as addressing that. The water is still going to. Um, you know, go into the ground and migrate toward our properties. And I just want to say on a personal note that this this uh, drainage lot with the riprap and the berm that's been proposed before, before the Zoning Board of Appeals was rejected by them. Um, and this whole idea of a drain, it's kind of setting up a dynamic now that we aren't gonna have to, aren't dealing with now. Are we now going to have to um, sort of be the, the guardians of, of the neighborhood and make sure our neighbor is maintaining what kind of relationship is, is that setting us up for? It's really putting like extra burdens on us and in, in addition to the um you know worrying about the storm water the water infiltrating so um and i'd also like to add that if we do decide to sell our properties how how do we explain to a prospective buyer when they say oh what's that behind behind the house oh it's it's a drainage lot they send all the storm water from belgravia in there and they'll be like, they send it behind your house. That these are the, the things I think of. So um, I'd ask you to not approve this uh, plan as it exists. So thanks for your time. Thank you, Paul. If I could uh, address some of those comments, uh, and then let me know if I can. Um, hang on, let's see if there's anybody else who would like to speak that is uh, attending. I don't see any hands at the moment, but um, if you want to go ahead and address those comments. Okay. First of all, um, the problem in terms of it, it is a groundwater problem that he has, that we are not exacerbating anything as it relates to groundwater. Uh, the drainage controls that we have here uh, to slow down the rate at which water finds its way off the site and so that the peak rate of runoff does not get exceeded from what it is now. If you look at the contours that are shown on this plan right now, a lot of the flow that goes across in the direction of his house comes from the areas that are beyond this project. If you look at all these contours that are coming across, they're coming from the areas that are across uh, 
and, and just find their way around and over and towards his house. This is what we're doing here is improving the way in which water moves across this whole area. Um, his house is actually over the property line in the back. The house from the 29 has a shed that's over into this property. Um, the one on 30 has one that's the corner of it is over the property line there. But we're not making issue with those things. We're just basically trying to, to do responsible stormwater management in order to make sure that we do not make anything worse than what's there now. I can't correct somebody who has a house where ground was built too low into groundwater. All I can do is make sure that my design isn't going to make his situation worse. I've been doing this work for 48 years as a civil engineer. I take everything that I do very seriously and I don't, I know that the, the gentleman from 29 uh, made it sound as though is that I do a design and uh, I go away and he stays there with, me. I approach every job as if I were living in that neighborhood. So it's not that I take offense to it, but I just want to clarify that we're very professional about what we do and how we look at all of these situations. And there is no way that I would propose something that would be detrimental to a neighbor. I can't correct his problem, but I am not making his problem worse. Um, Madam Chair, we have two other people. Uh, well, uh, Ron is a new um, speaker. So Ron, you are now able to um, join the group if you have a question or comment, please pick it now. I could just um, ask that no repetitive questions, concerns be addressed, so we're not beating this. Um, and Eric has a repeat or a, a, another question. Would you like him to? Is Eric ready? Eric should be allowed to talk. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mr. Silver said that he takes his feet. I'm not, I'm not he challenging what he does. Okay. Put your name on it. He can put his name on it. Insure it that I will not get over flooded. Guess what? Insure it. Insure it. Then, then after that, you can prove it. Insure it. Tell Mr. Silvica, insure it. It, it. it does not take a uh, scientist. We've been living here for so long. We've been living here for so long. Okay. If I'm living here since 2006, 2007, add that up. There's no need to lie. I am an investor. I own 12 Riverside Ave. I own 129 Hermes Street, 54 Vessi, 146 Sartell Ave. Sartell, okay? This is what I own. I am an investor. I invest. If I had the property, yes, I'm, I'm a very emotional person. Yes, I am emotional. If I had that property too, I would try the same thing. Okay. I, if conservation I think we've, we've heard I'm sorry. your comments. I think we've heard the same comment. Uh, is there any new information you'd like to no, add? No, the information is, it, it, it's like he, well, basically he's okay. trying to say he takes his job very seriously. Okay, I we take my house very seriously for not getting flooded and my family losing our house. All right, thank you. Let's let the board make their decisions. Okay, so we're closing public comment. So, Mr. Silva, how you are dealing with that impervious area water? the roof and the driveway, is that going directly to the uh, to the ground or you are taking it some other place? The only part of it that's going to the ground is the roof drains uh, for the houses. And those are just in the area of the two houses, which are considerable distance from the, the houses and the people that have spoken. The, the other stormwater, the major part of the stormwater is all surface flow and it's being regulated uh, through, uh, th 
through the stormwater management basin that's there. It's uh, filtering through those stone berms in order to slow down the pathway of the water in order to make sure that it does not create a, a higher rate of runoff than what currently goes across. It is not encouraging uh, water to uh, infiltrate into the ground. In fact, I've done test pits out there and those soils really don't encourage uh, any infiltration uh, uh, anyway. Uh, but so it's not, from it's, the it's down, not, downspout, it will directly go to the ground, right? You are not taking it, you are not managing it other ways. What happens that there will is, add another layer of water, right? I mean, some of it goes, the, some of it will go into the ground. Basically, uh, previously with no home there, the water went, uh, some of it went into the ground in that area. So, in order to mitigate that, we just uh, we infiltrate a portion of that flow that comes from the roof for certain level storms. For larger storms, there's an overflow on those downspouts, which allows for the water then go to the surface of those big storm events. And that would be captured in the street and it would go through the stormwater management system. Can you, uh, like, that's my suggestion. Can you create some kind of uh, like dry well or something to capture those waters so that you know it will not add up anymore to the to like to that what that's what the, that's what those that's what those uh are those are chambers which are dry wells okay. the water the goes dry wells. okay those are empty and when it rains that's the first place that water goes from and and it's there for each and every uh, houses. For each of the uh, each of the houses that are uh, being constructed. That's correct. Okay. Okay. And Rob, I'm sorry. There's been so, so many. So been a long evening, and so many applicants. You said um, Cheques are in agreement with this drainage and plan. Um. Pam can confirm, but I believe we have a, an email from Chike saying that he was okay with the plan. Um, he was leaving the granite and the sidewalk up to the planning board, um, but the, yes, he had reviewed the plan. I sent the last review letter to Larry today. Okay, if there's no other public comment, we're ready for a motion. Motion to approve, but we have a lot of language to add in here. Um, now, I, it, I'll probably need some help from Rob and Pam, but there is going to be an HOA on the two lots on Belgravia until the city takes over. That'll maintain the drainage basin on lot three, because we're eliminating lot four. Um, um, the, the, Larry, the city is not taking over the drainage basin. Right, correct. I'm, you're right, I'm sorry, right. Um, but the lights, there's an HOA for the lights. Uh, Are you putting in street lights, Larry? It was not, a, was not our plan to put in street lights. I thought there was, is there existing lights or no? I thought there was when we were talking about that, Rebecca was motioning about where lights would be. There's one light every 400 feet. So if you're not putting in a light, then it's moot. Okay. So Rebecca is highlighting something. What, right. Is that a new light or an existing light? I don't know if Rebecca's unmuted. I was under the assumption that I'm talking away like I'm talking to all of you. Okay, so yes, there's uh -huh. a utility pole with a light right here. There is one further up. They're existing. Those are existing now. Existing. Oh, okay. All right. And that's a moot point. Sorry about that. Um, sidewalks, again, that needs to be addressed with the set. The, are you talking Cape Cod Berm without a sidewalk, Larry, Mr. Silva? That's, that's, that's what we were. Uh, asking as a, as a waiver to allow for that. I, this is only two houses down beyond what's there now. And 
to have to put sidewalk all the way up to Winter Street across those existing homes just seems it, it's what? pretty expensive. Right, there's no sidewalk on the existing homes. That's correct. What about the electricity? Are we need? And, I mean, you're gonna need a new transformer. So, how they will be connected? Um, that's up to. Uh, whatever the power company it's up to national grid and uh, that they require yeah. uh, most times most times uh, on a subdivision uh, you don't know exactly how they will require that but for a couple of houses it's really uh, I don't think it's different than what's here um, we're, we're trying to get on our track Larry was making right. motion um, if you could continue with the conditions there's language he needs help with as far as um the one large lot combining combining the right it's not going to be a four lot subdivision it's going to be three parcels lot three will have drainage basin on it and the owner will have to maintain that the owner of that lot can i ask who's making popcorn you know here's something that sounds like a typewriter that's got to be Rebecca again. Yeah, it is. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. My kids are over there typing away. <laughs> um, I think I covered most of what I, I think we need on it. But if you know, I'm going to ask for help from either Pam or anybody else on the board to make sure we get this covered properly. To again, my motion is to approve. I'll second it. Um, Madam Chair. I, I, so I just I, want clarification on that condition for that one large I, lot. Yes, I would ask that to be a condition that we approve with it on the condition that the second house and the drainage lot be combined into one large lot. Three and four would become just three. Right. Correct. So, Larry, do you? And, and we address the condition for the lights. Right. So, Larry, do you amend your motion? Amended. Still motion to approve with that amended language. Yes. And uh, Jim, do you uh, second. amend your second? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Roll call. James? Yep. Yes. Larry? Yes. Farida? Yes. Tony? Yes. All right. Thank you, everyone. Ah, uh, don't go yet. Nope. Waivers. 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 Okay. So we need a waiver for the lights and the sidewalk. Well, we don't need a waiver for the light because the lights no, actually. No, we have to worry about the light. Okay. So it's just the Cape Cod it's for the, the Cape Cod berm and the sidewalk. Okay. So what do you need? A motion for this first waiver individually or? We would need a waiver to accept. Um, the application to remove the uh, to accept the waiver for the sidewalk to remove the sidewalk and then we would need a motion to accept the waiver for Cape Cod berm or the opposite a, a waiver uh, a motion to deny Is there a motion for a waiver for the Cape Cod berm so we're we're adding a Cape Cod berm correct instead of granite curb correct okay Motion to approve. Second. All right. Roll call, James? Yes. Larry? Yes. Burita? Yes. Tony? Yes. Any other waivers, Rob, that we missed? Sidewalk. So uh, this is a waiver to eliminate the sidewalk. Motion Correct. to approve. Second. Waiver of sidewalk. Okay. Second. Roll call, James? Yes. Larry? Yes. Freedom. Yes. Tony. Yes. I oh, have. Yeah. Sorry, Probably. I have one more question uh, it's about the late. snow <laughs> snow removal. So the city does not plow private streets. Okay, so that also they need to add, right? Well, they will have to take care of it themselves. Yes. Because the city won't be showing up. <laughs> Correct. Um, surety. 
Sherity. Mr. Silva. Um, I guess I'm, if you were looking for us to provide the surety, I, I was not aware of that. Well, you either um, pledge the lots uh, or a bond or cash. I'd have to defer to Mr. Cooley to see which way he would prefer for that to be. Joe, are you on? Joe is there. Unmute. Can someone take the plan down, please? Unmute. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Okay, Would it be great. easier if he does it as covenant at this point, and then you can work through lot releases when it's needed? He can't build without the road being there anyway, and the utilities in. So we would be able to build permanent if we talked about that, Rob, before. Yes, we would. So I can grab some cash to be able to. Put the road you in. would need to get Herman released. Herman Once you go to zoning. Trip back to zoning board. Oh, you Correct. go to zoning? It would be for the two lots on Belgravia for the improvement. Okay. So how do we handle that, Rob? I think that, is that enough to be able to do it that way at this point, Rob? Uh, that is probably your best bet. I'm not a lawyer. What are you uh, doing? It is, and it is your choice, but covenant I think he's two lots on Belgrade. He's going to do Covenant. And, and that would be excluding the Herman lot, which that still has to get approved by CBN. Right, but we're not, we're not, we're holding all three lots right now until you get through the ZBA. Once right. you're through ZBA, if you would like to get Herman released, you come back to the planning board, get it released then that will give you money to build out the rest of the road. And then we can, you can come back to us to get the Belgravia lots released. Okay, that's fine. Um, I will do my best to get these done <laughs> before I leave with road. We're gonna work on this in the next couple of days. Um, Joe, you will need to come in and sign this. Okay, uh, tomorrow you, is that oh food? no! Oh, <laughs> okay. oh no! Friday? Well, you can come in Friday. I'm not here. <laughs> uh, my problem. My problem is I will not be here Friday, so I'll have to sign it in a week. Will you be leaving? Time. You won't be around for a week. I'm going out of state. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'll get it done by Thursday, but if I do, I'll reach out to you. All right. Call me on the cell if you have it, or I'll call you. Whatever. No, we can do it on the last day. It could be your parting gift. <laughs> yes. He won't be here. <laughs> well, I'm flying, I'm, okay. I'm flying over at 5 o'clock. Friday the 12th. Any other business we need to take care of? Because I think we all really need a restroom yep. break. It's been three hours. <laughs> um, motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. Um, thank you. See you around. Welcome. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Good night, Enjoy everybody. retirement. Welcome, buddy. Thank you. Thank night, you. Everyone. Congrats, Bye. Ken.